you can go to professional shoots and the photographer is creepy. Like yeah. that happens. And that's a really tricky situation to be in because mm -hmm. you need to be professional. He was basically saying that he wanted to see my tits. It's so easy to get caught up in and just thinking that you're, you don't have any issues with food. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I would say most of my model friends, now looking back at it, we all had it. A certain measurement, especially around your hips, mm -hmm. that needed to be a certain yeah. like number. This person might be a little bit weird, but you know, just go along with it because because you know it's gonna be really good for a career. Like I've heard agents like about models getting told that. Fashion week is not really about money. Mm -hmm. Like nobody really like makes money unless you're like doing a lot of shows. There's so much people like you come to a casting and you might sit there for three hours and then you have to run somewhere else because you're always late and there's a million castings but i was in a model flat which was it's a whole thing it's like you share a room with a person you never met someone was on a diet just eating cherries drinking water and someone else wanted to have a fish and shit i'm not saying oh it's so easy i'm just gonna mm. become an actress tomorrow <laughs> like it takes time and it's hard work yeah and all that but i'm here for it and i think that shows reflecting back now on your uh modeling career are you happy with, it, with your choice hi i'm andrew rogozin and this is beyond real talk a podcast where i invite real entertainment industry professionals and ask them real questions what are they actually doing how are they doing it why are they doing it? And how can you start doing the same thing? And my today's guest is a model and actress from Sweden, Sophie Theobald. She has worked with well-known brands such as Ralph Lauren, Ted Baker, Elle, Vogue, and Max Factor. And before you moved to London, as I understand, you have lived obviously in Sweden because you are from Sweden. Uh, you lived in France, in the USA, and in Italy. Yes. We'll definitely talk about all of those places. Why? why you were there, why you moved. But let's start from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Sweden. Mm -hmm. What it's like. <laughs> what Sweden is like. Yes. Um, it's funny, I always felt like I wanted to move away from there, but not because it's not a lovely place, because mm. it is. I mean, it's very safe. Um, it's like a lot of lovely food, people, forest, water, all of that stuff. Um, but for me, there was always something I wanted to move abroad and I don't mm. know why. Like ever since I was, I guess, becoming a teenager maybe. Yeah. And that was for me perfect when this job came along being a model and yeah. I, I could move um, quite naturally just with that. Um, but that's not about Sweden. Um, so for me, <laughs> I still really like Sweden, but there was that weird, not a disconnection, but almost a little bit like I wanted something else. Mm. Uh, and I still don't know what it is. Cause when I go home, I love it. It's it's really nice, but I'm always longing to go back to London mm. or somewhere else. Um, but it is a lovely place. Mm. I would still recommend you to go. <laughs> are, you, are you from a big city or yes, small? Yes, I'm yeah. from Stockholm. All oh, right. Yeah, so I'm All from right. the capital. Yeah. Um, but so you're still, city girl. Yes. yes. <laughs> in a, but compared to London, it would be like a small town. Like it's, it's London was crazy. When I first got here, I... I feel like my brain couldn't comprehend yeah. like the amount of people and the stress. Like now mm. it's just part of my life. You know, you walk into the tube and you're just in this like yeah. crazy, I don't know, stream of people. And now I'm just like, oh, it's everyday life. You yeah. kind of learn to be with that. Yeah. Um, but when you lived in Stockholm mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. like in comparison to London, London is much bigger. There's way more people. Yeah. But like, I don't know about you, but for me, I kind of like sometimes I feel feel way more lonely here even though there's more people here in comparison to back yeah. Riga like because Riga is the capital of Latvia but it's tiny mm. in comparison to London yeah I think absolutely that comes with being in a big city but there's I know there is kind of studies about that and it's almost like because you are in a big city with a lot of people you just become less connected to everyone mm -hmm. and therefore you might feel even more alone yeah. rather than i mean stockholm is not a small city not everybody doesn't know everyone for sure <laughs> <laughs> but you somehow have a little bit more of a human connection with the yeah. people around you because it's not as you know huge amount of people mm -hmm. all the time um but I, yeah, but it's funny in a way, I do feel a bit more lonely sometimes in Sweden. Mm -hmm. And it's, I don't know if it's because what I do is not very like normal thing to do, yeah. like being a creative and 
doing modeling. I was the only one doing that. Like I didn't know anybody who did what, what I was about to do. Mm -hmm. And especially like acting, which I went into just two years ago. Yeah. So I'm considered old. I feel like starting acting, you know, in my later 20s. <laughs> I started in my early, um, early 30s. So yeah, but you know what I mean? And it's, yes. it's one of those things I know that if I lived in Sweden, I would have been laughed at. It's like, what are you doing? Like, yeah you're an adult, come on, like, you can't do acting. Like, it would be that kind of, you know, like, yeah. Whereas here, I feel like nobody even questioned me. It's like, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. do it. And then you go to class and I feel like, you know, obviously it's a bit trickier when you're mm -hmm. older maybe to get into the industry. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But I love it that I feel so encouraged here because in class, you know, we there's people in all ages and there's yeah. no judgment i think in in just like kind of do your thing do yeah. what you want to do and in that way i felt a bit more lonely in sweden because like what i wanted to do and are doing i think a lot of people don't really understand yeah i don't know anyone who would just randomly go into acting because they felt like it in their late 20s or 30s i feel mm -hmm. like acting would be like a choice yeah from when you were a kid and you mm -hmm. would have done the whole school and it's like yeah it's very clicky i think mm -hmm. i haven't acted in sweden so i'm just talking out of yeah. <laughs> bullshit maybe <laughs> <laughs> but this is my understanding of it and um i still it's like i feel like my friends and family are at, like they are encouraging me to, to do acting if that's what i want to do mm -hmm. but i always feel like it's a bit with a you know I don't know if anybody actually believes that you can just start doing acting at this age. I don't know. They're yeah. a bit like, yeah. <laughs> no, you, you try. <laughs> you know, do that. Yeah. But I feel like maybe because I've done modeling for such a long time and that was one of those things as well that people were a bit like, mm, are you really going to do that mm -hmm. for a job? Like maybe now they're a bit more like, okay, yeah, you just do you. <laughs> All right. And um well, modeling, mm -hmm. I want to talk about modeling a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I'm here for it. <laughs> um, uh, so you, how long were you doing modeling? 15 years? No, but it's been a while. But it's 12 been, years? Uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, let me think, 2000. So I got scouted in 2013 uh, in like February. So okay. that makes it 11 years, a little bit more. Yeah. 11 and a half-ish, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 11 years. That's, that's a lot. And you started mm. when you were pretty young. How, how did it happen? How did you get into modeling? Um, well, for, back then, it was a bit of a weird way because I got scouted online, mm -hmm. which like 12 years ago, almost, uh, was Where? not that common. Yeah. So, because social media was around, but it wasn't as big as it yeah. is now. And I got scouted through like a website. So basically, my grandma gave me like a membership for like extras in uh in movies mm -hmm. that you can like sign up for free yeah. um so i did that and uh, i was on this website and then my booker to this day still was kind of searching the internet just for like new faces mm -hmm. um and she found me there and she found my contact details so she called me and was like do you want to come in i think mm. you could do this thing so the um, way, did, she, did she call personally you mm, or your yeah. yeah no she called me <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um and obviously yeah. Like my mom and me being a teenager, my mom was very skeptical of getting a phone call saying, you could be a model, you should yeah, come to my yeah, office, yeah. you know. <laughs> um, but it was all serious and all good. Mm -hmm. And my mom eventually got on board with it. And it was a bit of a struggle for her, I think. Yeah. Um, knowing, you know, all we had was like top model to go off, like what is modeling, you know, that yeah. kind of show, which is quite terrifying if you think, you know, and I didn't really know what modeling was either, but I was mm -hmm. very intrigued. And I always loved, like, I always bought the fashion magazines and like all that mm -hmm. stuff. And I don't know, there was something that I was like, yeah, I want to do this. Um, but I had no idea. I didn't know anybody who did it. So mm. yeah, I got scouted online. <laughs> so what is modeling then? Well, I was on fashion modeling. Yeah. <laughs> There's loads of types. Yeah. Um, but it is everything from moving to different cities and living in different cities and doing like castings. You might not know mm -hmm. if you're going to work or not. You just go there, take a leap of faith, mm -hmm. and you're hoping that you're going to get work, basically. Yeah. And you're connected then with different agencies in the different countries. Uh, and then it's basically just about going to castings and hopefully get booked. And then you kind of start from there and getting to know you know, you get into the industry kind of more and more, mm -hmm. uh, but it's a lot of castings in the beginning, like a lot. 
and yeah. it's so tiring. It, like you might go around London, especially because oh my god, it's so big, and yeah. like a whole day would just be you know ten hours of castings, just going from one side to the other to the other like this. Um, so it's a lot of that, but also a lot about you. You might live in a model flat it's called so it's yeah. just a flat for models mm -hmm. uh that the agencies have and they provide for you because you might not be able to afford a place because yeah. you, you're 17 and you're going to the city and you don't have any money so mm -hmm. you're just living there and they basically take the rent off your money when you earn them yeah, so yeah, you don't yeah. put it out of your pocket basically uh but then just getting around that and all of a sudden you know you, you need to grow up a lot like mm -hmm. you grow up really fast and that's something i noticed because I was 17 when I first started to go abroad and like I felt like I developed a lot like mm -hmm. it would just really change you to all of a sudden be on your own and I remember yeah. it was a weird feeling I was like I'm gonna do grocery like <laughs> my mom does this <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> going close just just appears in my, you know? on the shelf <laughs> uh, so it was a whole thing to just now it's like everyday life but to mm -hmm. just wrap your head around that really quickly and learn how to manage you know weekly budgets mm -hmm. and I don't know. It was a lot. And just get to know people from all kinds of places. You mm -hmm. live with new random people and just need to get to know them. And it's just, it's a lot of that. But also, obviously, you go to shoots and you do, you might do catwalks, you might do the shoots. There's a lot of traveling when you're working and there's all kinds of very creative shoots. And then there is very more like very commercial or very, you know, we're selling this product and it's quite efficient. It's not as like, just creative in a way so it really really depends um mm. but yeah i guess that's modeling <laughs> i don't know it's very hard to like answer and also modeling obviously it does kind of creep into your everyday life because it's not that like you're a model every day all the time but it's more like you obviously maybe, you know, it, you need to, to look after yourself in a way. And it doesn't mean that, you know, you need to be on a super diet and da 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 But I think that kind of just integrates into your, like, thinking after a while that, like, you are... Like, I always loved, like healthy food and working out in a way like mm -hmm. that was never like a struggle once I started mm -hmm. modeling but I think maybe because I've done modeling for so long it just becomes kind of second nature to take care of yourself in like I, I don't know mm -hmm. I don't know I just <laughs> guessing because that's all I know but yeah. that maybe becomes kind of part of your everyday life in that yeah, sense yeah. as well. I, I actually wanted to talk to you about that because like there are some kind of standards probably in modeling i mean like yeah i understand that now like there's like way more inclusivity in they're like plus size models like and all this kind of stuff yeah uh, but it's still there is probably some kind of you know standards that you yeah. have to be in. it's i think it's it's got a lot better so when i started it was very strict there was yeah. like a certain measurement especially around your hips mm -hmm. that needed to be a certain like yeah. number and if you were one centimeter above it it was like you need to be at least this number. Like it was very like that. Yeah. Um, and in the beginning, there was a lot of stress around that. And I remember all my friends doing the same thing that I got to know through modeling. That was one of those things that like, you just had to have that magical number at least mm -hmm. or be below it. And I don't find that at all anymore. In general, I think that changed quite a lot. Um, but it still definitely comes with, obviously, there's some kind of body type that people mm -hmm. are looking for but i feel like when i'm working i see more and more different people and i've changed a lot as well like i definitely don't look the way i did when i was 17 and doing modeling like because back then it was i had to be so skinny mm -hmm. and and also being a teenager i mean your body changes as well um so it's been really i feel like it has changed but it depends on the city and where you are like i feel like london is really good for this like yeah. it's more acceptance mm -hmm. than if you go to like milan i feel like there might be a little bit more like it could be a bit more you should have a certain measurement yeah. kind of thing there in paris as well sometimes but it depends it really does i think yeah in general but coming to the plus size thing i feel like something that's been a little bit of an issue in the modeling world is that it always has to be these like extremes so it's like either you're plus size and mm. then there's also certain measurements that mm. you need to achieve to be plus size <laughs> okay, or so. you All need right. to be like skinny and have these certain you know like there's never really 
it there hasn't been much room to just be you like be a normal human yeah there's always these like extremes in a way mm -hmm. like, portrayed rather than like humans yeah um but this is what i feel like is changing because i consider myself looking fairly human like i don't feel like i'm super skinny or you know i'm fairly normal and i feel like that's finally accepted in a way it depends on the brand and mm -hmm. all that but it is becoming more and more normal which is great mm -hmm. but yeah it's a bit of a <laughs> so but it's not great. a struggle for you because you like you, you like healthy food and you like exercise <laughs> i wish i had the same <laughs> <laughs> well say yeah i think that's just always been part of my life like i've done sports since i was little like i've always been active and it was always been like it wasn't like oh now i need to start working mm -hmm. out like it's just always been there um and yeah i loved like i remember being a kid and i just well, i just wanted vegetables and stuff like that and it was a bit weird i also loved candy by the way i was not i was not a perfect child <laughs> but i was eating a lot of yeah. this like just greens and stuff mm. so it was never really a big change for that but i did definitely have to do diets and stuff mm -hmm. when i started doing modeling because of these crazy measurements that was acquired mm. and i wanted to do this so i wanted i was like i'm just gonna of course it's worth it yeah. like i want to go on this journey mm -hmm. uh i wasn't really thinking much about it and for a while i was definitely i think i was on a diet i wasn't considering myself necessarily on a diet because i would still drink and have dessert and like mm -hmm. do things but it was still under a very controlled matter and i yeah. think this is something that it's so easy to get caught up in and just thinking that you you don't have any issues with food mm -hmm. um whereas i would say most of my model friends now looking back at it we all had it mm -hmm. and it just kind of becomes part of the job and it's it's weird and now mm -hmm. i'm kind of out of that and i'm actually like I don't have a diet for real, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. other than just eating, you know, I, obviously I don't eat fried food all the time, but I wouldn't want fried food all the time. So it's like, it, yeah, I don't really think about it in that sense anymore. Um, so yeah, I don't want to glorify it and say, all models eat wherever they want because it's not true. <laughs> like there's definitely a lot of that issue yeah. still happening. So yeah, yeah, I guess it depends. No, I mean, like if it's a, in a healthy way, then like, we all need healthy diets <laughs> and by healthy diets i don't mean like you can't eat at all you just you you know don't do too much <laughs> uh because yeah i know i know wow. how how easy it is like to yeah. go the other way or, you know like on the right. other way of the spectrum and just like eat too much mm. then too bad mm. all right and so what was your first job do you remember um i so my first like actual paid shooting i think i want to say it was another stories do you know another stories mm -hmm. it's part of the h&m kind of branch it's like arcade another stories h&m that kind of mm -hmm. um i think i'm not sure if it was but i remember i was in paris i just got to paris from stockholm and i was there just to be there for like 10 days i think because i was still in school mm -hmm. um And my agency was like, you got a job in Stockholm. And I was like, fuck's sake, I just got to Paris. <laughs> so and you went to Paris, like, okay, let, let's back up a little bit. So how did you yeah. get to Paris for the first time and why? Uh, well, it was the, the thing about just going there and basically work a little bit with my agency, mm -hmm. basically just be in the city, um, do the castings, hopefully get some work, but just kind of, you kind of want to like get into the market so that hopefully they can direct book you, which means now that i'm here i have a paris agency right now and mm. they send me like just direct bookings meaning that i don't have to go to the castings like they might send me um you know an option uh which is kind of like a pencil i guess in the mm -hmm. acting word uh so you just get those sent directly to you mm -hmm. rather than having to be in the city doing the castings and this was kind of something that i was going there to do the castings meet people meet my agency mm. uh you know maybe do a job Uh, that's why I went there and yeah I got a call that I was gonna go back to Stockholm and I was like <laughs> great uh what are the odds uh but it was funny because they booked me uh and I remember they thought I was French because they booked me through my French agency yeah and I got there and they were like they thought I was all like you know tropical from France and they were like you're Swedish <laughs> I was like yeah sorry <laughs> um So I think that was my first job because I remember being like, oh my God, I'm actually going to get like 
paid for this like because up until then i felt like i've done more like small shoots and maybe test shoots but like or magazine stuff which is not really paid mm -hmm. so this was my first i want to say that was my first like proper job yeah 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 <laughs> and i think i spoke to i, I spoke to boo about it oh, about like yeah. that magazine uh shoots not being paid like mm -hmm. can you explain why i know this is like the most confusing thing um basically <sighs> I feel like there's so many different reasons they have, but usually it's because it's not a big budget because it's all creative. So that can be like a reason. So it, everybody kind of does it more for their portfolio. Mm -hmm. Like, like the money is not like, it's not like a brand that has like a massive budget and very commercial. So it could be the budget. And I don't know, honestly, I'm still sometimes confused about this because I'm like, surely these people make money. Uh, but mm. it's just part like Vogue, like all these things. You you would think they have yeah. quite a lot of money, right? Yeah. But I don't know. It's just, I think they should. It's just part of the game now. Yeah. I don't know. It's like not really expected to be paid. Like you mm. might be paid sometimes, but like a tiny amount for a mm. magazine. It's more like almost like, I don't know, just a symbol. Like Expenses. It's, it's a little something, <laughs> it's you know? For a percentage. <laughs> so but, like, uh, yeah. uh, correct me if I'm wrong. So as I understand, like if there is some kind of some brand or there's some, some advertisement in this magazine, they yeah. obviously, you, you're getting paid. But if it's magazine that they, they make the shoot for themselves, yeah. Uh, then it's not paid. Yeah, time, yeah, exactly. Because it's like a create, editorial is like a creative, thing it's mm. not for a product it's not for mm. a brand that is making money out of this it's like the magazine is like a creative you know like you know when you like look in a fashion magazine if you ever do <laughs> every morning <laughs> all the time yes. uh and there is like yeah you know those it's just like clothes uh obviously you know they write what you're wearing yeah and there's a bit of promotion in that for the brands but it's just uh yeah i don't know it's like a more like an creative art thing that you do these editorials and it's really good to have in your book because mm -hmm. when you have those you you tend to book better paid jobs so they kind of go a bit hand in hand mm -hmm. but yeah i don't know it's just stuck around and you yeah. know you don't get paid and when you get more experience as, as a model like when you because you have like a huge portfolio right now right like after all those years like do you still do those jobs a lot or like or it's less the editorial ones. Yeah. It actually, I would say I was doing it more when I was younger yeah. in general. I still do them every now and then. Um, but yeah, it's not, but it really depends also how you like as a model. So I'm more commercial as a model. Mm -hmm. And so I do more like campaign and, you know, social media stuff or e com like things for, for brands. Mm -hmm. uh, and every now and then I shoot editorials because I'm a commercial model. And then there is girls that are like or men that are like fashion models like like high fashion models mm -hmm. and they might do more like catwalk editorial uh and i don't know then there's also a mix you know you can do a bit of both mm -hmm. i've always done a little bit of both mm -hmm. but i don't know somehow there is a difference there and it, it can be a bit how you look your measurements like all these kind of things um so it's a bit of different type of models as mm -hmm. well because I have friends who've done modeling for as long as me and they still might do a lot of editorial because they are like high fashion models, not as commercial mm -hmm. in a way. What what are different specializations of, of, of models? Uh. <laughs> because for most people who are very far from the fashion world, <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know the difference. I know there are like, for example, like they could be like lingerie models. Yeah. It's like a different different cast yeah. <laughs> of people. There are people who do the catwalks and then top models. What is top model? <laughs> well, top models, I would say, is like the ones that is famous to the public. Okay. Because most models aren't. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not famous. I'm not like... Yet. People wouldn't... <laughs> yet let's wait and see uh <laughs> no but like because a lot of us models we're just doing modeling and we are seen around like yeah. you might be in the window of some stores or magazines and like stuff like that but we're not nobody knows me yeah. like oh you're sophie that model whereas i feel like top model is when you kind of go into that area where someone like you who maybe isn't super into the modeling yeah. world 
still I've know. still heard, you might, I've you know, heard some names. Like yes. Gigi Hadid or Bella Hadid. I'm sure you know these no. people. You don't? <laughs> what? I'm honestly not. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly don't. Fair enough. Fair I enough. kind of like, I remember Olga Kurilenka, but she's an actress yeah, now yeah, as well. Yeah, but like yeah. there's, there were But there like, is like those, su- yeah. like Naomi yeah. Campbell. Like yeah. That's, yeah, like the, that's like the super top models, I think. Yeah. And they, people say that that's kind of dead. That doesn't exist anymore. Mm. Because back then there was not that many people doing modeling. It was only like a little click that was doing modeling and I feel like if you were modeling you were kind of about to succeed because it wasn't that common oh, really? whereas now it's like it's so many especially with social media like you can just book people off social media you mm-hmm. don't even have to have an agency um it's is massive now there is so many models like but it's sure. interesting if market is so oversaturated mm-hmm. like the, the, there is not enough work for everyone <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, it's like this. But, you know, I feel like so many jobs are this way, especially creative jobs Mm -hmm. where, you know, there's a massive amount of people that want to do it. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I think modeling is kind of like for me, what my expertise like so far with acting Mm -hmm. is that acting is a lot harder and less work with a lot of people want to do it compared to modeling. I feel Mm -hmm. like there is more work in modeling, uh, even though there's a lot of people doing it there is still a difference there. It's not as hard, I think, as as with acting. But it is, like, I think also the issue is obviously that all these brands that might start want to book models without an agency Mm -hmm. because they get a bit cheaper, like, things like that. It kind of could shift the whole... The whole industry quite a lot because at the moment, as a model, you kind of need to have an agent. There's, like... Yeah. There's basically... You can do it without, but basically you can't. (laughs) Like, it's Mm -hmm. too tricky. Um... So, yeah, I don't know if that, like, eventually will that become a, like, I don't know, with social media and people just booking people straight up there. I don't know. We'll see Mm -hmm. what's going to happen. But so far, I think because we've had agencies, it's not that you're guaranteed work at all, but it's been a little bit easier, I think, to get Mm -hmm. work rather than, like, with acting, you can be with an agent. You don't have to be with an agent. Like, there's so... I don't know. Mm. I feel like it opens doors for more people, which is good, but also... (laughs) (laughs) But also less work. (laughs) Yeah. But uh, again, like if uh, the market becomes so big, there probably is a lot of work that you would never do. (laughs) Yeah, of course. (laughs) There's definitely different. Yeah. Loads of different kind of work. But mainly like... I mean, you want it to be professional. You want it to feel like a professional shoot. Like Mm -hmm. that's one of the main things. And I think there, that's where the agency comes in, right? I feel Mm -hmm. like when you're booked with your agency, you're more or less guaranteed that it is like, you're protected, it's a professional shoot, it's Mm -hmm. professional people. Cause there's nothing worse than coming to a shoot. And it's like, you can just tell don't know like it's this is not gonna be good ever, <laughs> like, ever, ever happened to you i think i mean it has yeah. but i'm trying to remember now like a scenario i think ugh, it's hard because as a model you're not really supposed to say if you don't like something yeah which is annoying yes. <laughs> but you're kind of supposed to just be there as yeah. like this is the makeup you want on me. Like, mm-hmm. let's do it then. Or this is the shots and the lights. Yeah. And you might look at it and be like, that looks terrible. And be maybe mm-hmm. you think, you might even know sometimes how to fix it to make it look better. Um, but you can't really say it because that's not your place. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you you kind of work with the team and you might give little suggestions and stuff. It's not that you're not allowed to talk. Yeah. But end of the day, you're in their hands. It's like you yeah. just... And, and, and that's... So... I can't give you an, like a an straight example right now when I've had this happening to me, but it's more, maybe a little bit more if you go into the editorial test shoot kind of area where there might be people that are like, we're going to do a test shoot. We're going to submit it to some magazines. And then you want to know that it's good. Or yeah. if it's like, a, it could be students, graduates of fashion schools doing something and they might not really know what they're doing yet. And then it could feel a bit like, oh, well, this is a bit of a mess or something, which is fine. But, you know, it's just little things like that. Um, Yeah. But I feel like in the modeling world, especially, and especially considering that right now there are so many people who are like modeling, even without agencies, there, there are people who are exploiting this. 
And there is there, there is a lot of like I've heard of, of a lot like of the very shady shoes or shady people who are like trying to contact you know like models and you know and, and, and they're like ever happened anything like like that to you? Definitely. Yeah. But but never like because I feel like that's like the nightmare scenario, right? That you yeah. go to a shoe and it's like a creepy vibe. I mean. Mm -hmm. That's that's like no no, mm -hmm. and I know people who've had to to go through that. Yeah, um, I never felt personally in a like unsafe space yeah. when I went to a shoot, but I've definitely been contacted by people. But it's mainly been more like small brands, sometimes photographers and stuff who will write to me on social media. But then, if I respond to them, it will be like you look on their like you know on the profile do they have a lot of followers what does their work look like mm. but uh, sometimes i do feel like you you you, you need to be smart yeah. well, who's contacting you and there is a reason they're contacting you straight because they know you have an agency mm -hmm. so you need to be thinking what is the reason and there are some smaller brands that might be like because when you're so basically when you're booked with an agent they pay a fee on top of your fee just because they're booking it with the agency so for them, it becomes more expensive um, to book it with an agency. So like some brands might contact you hoping they can skip that fee and do it directly with you and like little things like that. And a lot of the time I just tell them like, I'm with an agency, I'm going to let them know. Um, are you happy mm. with that? And usually they're like, yeah, that's fine. Of course, let's see what, like, what we can work out and, and like just take it from there. Because I think if they're strictly like, no, don't tell your agency, that's maybe when you're a bit like, mm. Mm, okay, well, <laughs> why not? <laughs> um, but yeah, you just need to be clever with it, I think. Mm. And it is tricky, like, because you, you can go to professional shoots and the photographer is creepy. Yeah. Like that happens. And that's a really tricky situation to be in because mm -hmm. you need to be professional. Yeah. You're in a professional setting and you're there to work and do your job. But at the same time, which is something that I think the older you get, the more, you know, you just know when to speak up and not just and stuff like that. So, but you can have a weird vibe with people on set as well. And it can be a professional setting. Mm -hmm. And that's where you really need to be like... I don't want to say that brave, but like it's important to stand up for yourself because yeah. there's things that you know you don't need to st like stick up with whatever is happening. You have the right to speak it up mm. if you're not okay with something. Um, but that can be really tricky, especially in the beginning when mm. you're kind of like you just want to get into the industry and these are professionals and this is a nice you know. And yeah, I remember like having like weird. Like now thinking back at it, I'm a bit like, mm, that's not really okay. Like, like when I was younger and, and I was shooting um, and I remember there were people smoking on set, like getting high. No, oh. and <laughs> I thought just smoking. Like, okay. You're like, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Like getting, getting high. high. It's all right. And you're like, it can, that can turn really weird. Like <laughs> you feel a bit. That's not okay. Like mm. we're in we're in a professional setting, right? Mm. But you're you're like okay, and you know this world is a bit weird. And then you know I was quite young at the time, and you're just like okay, like it's cool. This is a professional shoot. Mm. But then when like the photographer might starting saying weird things, and they're like like what? <laughs> Any examples? <laughs> you want to hear it all? Uh, well, he was basically saying that he wanted to see my tits. And I know, sorry, mom, she's going to listen to this. Um, <laughs> and it wasn't the part um, of the shoot. Well, it, that's the thing. When you do these kind of shoots, sometimes you do like topless shots, yeah. but it's not like, mm, look at my boobs. Yeah. It was like very, you know, you do Artistic. it. Yes. And it wasn't, I didn't feel that it would be in a, any weird way. Like it wouldn't have been a weird shoot, but that made it weird. And I'm like- The, the, the way he commented yeah, on that. Yeah, for because sure. Because like, like, if you need to kind of set up the shot, I understand that you maybe need like a little bit different position or whatever, but say it in a different way. Yeah, you need to be yeah. like- you Professional. A hundred percent. It's like any, any job where it includes nudity. I think if you're so is like, if you're a doctor, if you're a, I don't know, waxing people, whatever it is, because mm -hmm. that's that's intimate. Yeah. Like whatever, if you're seeing a person naked, you need to treat it like they're not naked mm -hmm. and that is normal. It's not sexualized in any way. I mean, that's, I think that's the main yeah. thing to make it 
normal and okay mm-hmm. um but things like that and in that sense i remember being like laughing it off a bit or whatever yeah because you're like oh that's a bit weird but okay <laughs> um and now i think i would have been like what the fuck like yeah. i would have been telling him off yeah. but i think that comes with age as well <laughs> but and- uh <laughs> Here's the thing, like how how protected are models in this kind of environment? Because this is official shoot. Okay, you came here from your agency. This is official shoot, but at the same time, like how much can you speak up without actually fearing for I don't know, like getting bad reputation? Like she's she's hard to work with or whatever. Like, yeah, I know that is a fine line. I think it also with this whole Me Too thing that happened, uh, that's got a lot better. So mm-hmm. in general, I think people are more aware of what they're saying and not even getting people to a place where they need to like Mm -hmm. speak up it's not as much of that happening i want to say but there is definitely that and i've had that i've had this quite recently i was on a shoot um and there was just something weird with the photographer like i did not vibe with him i felt really bad energy from him Mm -hmm. and it felt like he was almost bullying me in a way it was really weird it was a very weird dynamic and this rarely happens but there and then i felt like i almost had to like say something to Mm -hmm. him because i was like this is weird like this is off like what what what's going on yeah um but I didn't. And I think back on my head, I didn't because I was worried that, you know, I wouldn't get booked again or I wouldn't, you know, you want to be easy to work with, like yeah. like you were saying. So that is kind of in the back of your head. But I think it comes to, you need to like find the line. Like, is this worth bringing yeah. up? And if it is, then... You know, I mm-hmm. think it's worth that risk. If they don't book you again, they don't book you again. And the agency should be behind you, like, in that sense. Um, but if it's, like, tiny things, like, you know, you do hear about models that are hard to work with, and it might be because they don't want anyone to touch them. And it's like, well, you are a model, and you are going to, like, people, you know, fiddle yeah. with your hair, and they do, like, t- you know, they style your clothes. And if you're that, like, you might not want to be touched, but I think in this job, it's tricky certain yeah. things you have to kind of get around of course yeah um yeah. but if you speak up to someone because they behave badly i think that should you might lose the job but the agency should still have your back i think mm-hmm. um do, do you feel like all agencies are, are good in this way that they are like being behind their clients or or there are some cases when they just like just do the job the fuck? we need the money come on yeah oh that's a good question i think I think it goes both ways. Yeah. It really depends on the model and on the like on the agency. I mean, and I've I've heard some horror stories about that as well. I've never been in that situation, mm-hmm. but like this was also a bit like before Me Too and everything. But like people getting sent to photographers that have a bad reputation, like they know mm-hmm. shit shit is wrong there. They do bad things. Um, being sent to those photographers saying. Um, this person might be a little bit weird, but, you know, just go along with it because, because you know, it's going to be really good for a career. Like, I've heard agent, like, about models getting told that. Um, and that's terrible. Mm-hmm. Like, that is not okay in any way. Um, and in that sense, the agency don't have your back because they would rather see you mm-hmm. getting further in your career rather than keeping you safe. But being weird, like, in the way that they, they just, like, because there are some people who are just, socially awkward oh. <laughs> they're like they're not they don't no. mean bad but like right. they're kind of just like or actual photographers who did kind of violate like basically yeah. being creeps like yes creep that creeps. Le- yeah. the latter yeah like creeps yeah yeah and agencies were like well and so, how i mean it's it was before me too this, or is it still the, the, the stories i heard was before me too yeah so i'm sure this still happens mm-hmm. i would say i don't personally this is more like the, you know, the top, top photographers, mm-hmm. the high fashion, like, world. Um, I'm not necessarily in that world mm-hmm. so much anymore. So I don't know. I'm sure it still happens. But I think it's it's a fine line because I think the agent should always be behind you, like, behind your back. But at the same time, they want to be on a good side with the clients and they want to mm-hmm. keep booking with the clients. So they're always in a bit of a, we hear you and we support you, like we represent you in the end. But at the same time, sometimes you can tell that they also want to please the client. Mm-hmm. So it's really, 
it's tricky. I think if something is really wrong, your agent like absolutely should be behind your back. I think a hundred percent. Otherwise, why do you have them? I think. Mm. Um, but at the same time, like I've had minor issues at shoots um, and things like, which is not like a, it's not like a bad thing that's happened. It's more like, for example, I've been sent home from shoots and like I was sent home from a shoot because back then I was too skinny, they thought. And I was, I flew there for the job. Uh, I was supposed to be for two weeks, the job. And they got Polaroids, meaning like shots of me. Like you take like a full body shot, like face shot, like bikini, like all these things. Cause they want to see how you look before they book you. And they basically got this maybe like five days before, like the shots were like five days old. Uh, more or less and um, so they do know how you actually look right now yeah 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 yeah. it was like literally taken like five days ago and I got there and I could tell something was like wrong because it was underwear as well and they tend to want maybe a little bit curvier like Mm -hmm. back then I was really skinny but they booked me like Mm -hmm. you know so it was like okay and I could tell something was a bit off because you just know and usually the clients don't talk to you yeah which is horrible because you are not dumb <laughs> so you're just there like okay guys like I can tell and they're all like whispering and being like eh, like smiling at you and whispering and you're like oh god let's just rip this bandage off but yeah. at the same time you don't want to be complicated mm. and be like what are you talking about like mm. you, you it's a very weird yeah. environment to be in um but I could tell that for them it wasn't working that I was too skinny to shoot underwear with them um and yes yeah, so my booker called me as soon as I got out of there, like I left the building and he basically called me mm-hmm. two minutes later. He was like, hi, how are you? Like, yeah, the, the client it doesn't seem to work. Like they say yeah. you're a bit skinny. Like what? Yeah, yeah. You know, like this. And he was like, can you go home, take some photos? Because they sent the photos. So they wanted proof that I actually look the way that yeah. I looked in the photos. Um, so, but they still ended up sending me home the day after. And in that sense, it was one of those things where nothing had gone wrong and these things can happen like they have they have the right uh to say oh this model is not what we expected and they have the right to do that if you're booked but do they Um, still pay you so that's the thing so they are still supposed to pay for like the work you've done Mm. i think um so i was booked on a two-week shoot but i and which means for two weeks i had got booked off so all my other options, everything was cancelled. Yeah. And then because they I, they got shots of me from five days before and I got there and they were like, oh, no, you are too skinny. Uh, that was a bit of a gray area because technically they're allowed to get their, they're allowed to complain, but then it might be the fact that you absolutely, that you don't look the way that your photo says or your yeah. measurements are off or whatever. And if they say it straight away, that's fine. They have that kind of, 24 hour, 44, you know, they have a little bit of time to say, you know what, we're not going to work with this model. Mm. Um, but since they've got such a recent update, it was a bit of a back and forth of like, yeah, should, should, you know, she should still get something paid because she's been there, she's flown in, you know what she looked like. Yeah. This might be a little bit of a wrong cast on your end. And like, you know, so in that sense, like my agent was like, I knew they were working for me to get me something. But I also know they were very aware of keeping the client happy. So you can sometimes feel that, that it's like, they wouldn't say like, oh, fuck off to the, to the client. They will still be very, you know, mm-hmm. they did try to make both happy, which yeah. is fine. I understand that, that they can't just, you know, completely yell at all the clients because then there won't be anyone left, <laughs> maybe, you know. But it's yeah. a, yeah, it's a, it's a tricky thing. Like it doesn't happen both. too often? No, 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 it doesn't happen too often at all. But it does happen mm. and it's, it's just Well, it. It, it happens, I think, everywhere. You can mm. be cast in a role and then after the pilot, get fired. <laughs> exactly. No, it's the same with acting, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, I've heard that. I was listening to some podcasts and it was like some, some I think it was the guy in... Um, Big Bang Theory, the the one of the main cast, and mm-hmm. I know somebody on the team wanted him out, mm. and you know he had done quite a lot of it, but yeah. they were like, no, we don't like him. He needs to go or something, and and he got to stay, obviously, because somebody mm. fought for him. Like, no, he's he's good. Yeah. Um, but that to me is also like how mentally exhausting to be 
<laughs> you're never safe, right? It's like you got the job, but then you, yeah. unless you see it, unless yeah. you're done, yeah. it's like you don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's like like so. with this uh, bad girl film that got basically shelved because it was fully made and was in the editing process and then studio decided like they they, they were some rushes or they watched like this, this first edit and they were like no we don't believe in this film anymore oh, and they basically decided that it is better for them to shelve this film so if this film will be never shown to anyone they can basically get some taxes or so, so something like some um. few like 30 million something on taxation they, they would get back or something like that instead of releasing it from like 80 million budget an 80 million dollar budget film if it would be released theatrically they think they would lose more money than it's and can you imagine like people worked on the full film like it was shot completely um, the actress oh. who was cast as a bad girl she was expecting like okay maybe this is finally my next step and then mm. suddenly just like well I mean, they get paid, but it's sometimes it's not the only thing that you expect from, from making no. a movie. <laughs> no, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. That, it's stressful. Yeah. It is stressful. And that's part of it. Like with modeling as well, I feel like, because you work with new people all the time. So every time you go to work, it's kind of like a new day at work. Yeah. Like you're like with your new colleagues, your new work environment. Like mm. you always need to be a bit on like that mood <laughs> to, to, do, mm. to do it. And um it is, yeah, it is tricky, like, because you never know in the day, there's no guarantees, like, mm -hmm. you could get sent home, or you could get, like, no, we don't like her, like, all these things can happen, so I don't necessarily go into the work thinking that, but it's still somehow that first day at work thing always, you always want to, impress might be the wrong word, but, you know, you want to be liked by everyone there. Yeah. And you're very aware of that, I think, when mm. you go into to work. And I think it's the same with acting. Like, mm. you kind of always need to, like, put your best foot forward. And it can be exhausting. If you're having a bad yeah. day, it's, like, mm. it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. it's also exciting. I kind of love that as well with modeling. Mm. Like, that every day is a little bit like a new day. That it's so much, you know, variety of people and locations and work and all that. But... It obviously comes with a bit of instability. Mm. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what is the, your favorite type of jobs to do as a model? Uh, what's my favorite type of job? So there is a very different, like, I feel like the best paid jobs, like the proper big shoots, tend to not be like super creative, yeah. which being super creative is very fun. But I also really enjoy having like a well-paid job. So it's I, like... <laughs> I wonder why. I don't know. Uh, but what's so like... it's a bit of a spectrum what's yeah. my favorite job. Um, depending on when you're there, like how much you're enjoying yourself when you're there. Like being in an amazing location with a team and having these great clothes on. I mean, that's so much fun. But that might pay zero money. So I wouldn't choose to do that all the time, but it's really fun. Whereas if you do really well-paid jobs, yeah, it might be a less creative process. And you might not be as... It's still exciting because you're still creating something with people and you're in a very like professional environment and you can... It's, it's weird. It's still like a, an energy that I really enjoy when I'm on a big shoot. And it might be a bit more commercial, a bit more like, this is the shot we're doing. And this is it's not as free flowy maybe mm -hmm. um but it's still something really it's like it's still something really fun about it but i wouldn't necessarily say the shoot itself might not be more fun than when you're on an amazing location somewhere mm -hmm. and shooting you know yeah it's a bit yeah. on a spectrum how can you be creative as a model what is like what, what, yeah. what like what, and just in general just in general for people like me no idea how to <laughs> be a model like yeah. Is it like anyone can just suddenly become a model? Or like what kind of skills you have to have? What is the modeling yeah, skill? That's so interesting. Um, there are like model schools, you know, yeah. which I find really fascinating. I've never been to model school. Um, and I think that might be a little bit more of a concept to sell to people mm -hmm. that wants to get into modeling, might not have an agency and they're like, oh, maybe I need to do this too. But I don't know anyone who has an agency and like, I'm going to go to model school because mm -hmm. like, you kind of learn on the job. Yeah. I would say I still learn. I feel like 
every time you go to work, there's someone with new preferences, with, with new lights, with new like directions. And every time you just take little things on board, I think, and you learn as you go. And I think that's kind of the only way to learn. But you def, I mean, I say that, but I do remember I was practicing quite a lot, like walking my heels when I started modeling, because yeah. it was one of those things that people were like, you need to learn, you know, walking your heels. So I was doing that a lot, but I don't think I ever wear heels. Like, honestly, as a model nowadays, yeah. There is obviously shoots with heels and I don't really do catwalk, which is like, obviously. If you you do don't cat- do it because you don't like it or because it's just... Um, so I think in general, you tend to do it when you are a bit younger. I think in general, like you're a new face, you're mm-hmm. like, you're, they just, yeah, it just ha- tends to be that way. And then you might do it less and less the older you get because it is exhausting. Fashion week is a mess, but it can also be fun. But I was never... Uh, a catwalk model because when I started modeling it was still quite strict with measurements Mm -hmm. with height I was too short so I was considered a short model (laughs) I am (laughs) well so I'm 5'9 right and I was considered short so I was like a few centimeters off but that mattered you know so and a lot of my friends who are catwalk models they will be like 180 centimeters they might be around that height And that's more like catwalk yeah. height, you yeah. know. So I always felt really tiny next to them. It was like, I'm so short. And then <laughs> you're like, no reality <laughs> perspective. Um, so I never really did it from the get-go. And then they started to be like, okay, we're going to have short models now. And, <laughs> and um, basically I did a little bit. But even then, they're very, it's a very judgmental, very like, You want to use the people that are cool right now in your catwalk. So like brands will look at what other brands have booked and they take from there. And Mm -hmm. it's very like that, very, you don't really, you can just do one off show and like rock up from nowhere. But usually it starts in one city. I think it's New York. Um, and with the casting directors and you meet everyone and then they kind of just follow through Europe because it's like New York. I might say this in the wrong order, New York, London, Milan, Paris, or something Mm -hmm. like this. And you do all of them, one like one after another. And usually the models kind of follow along with what they got casted in. You know, like they meet the casting directors in the first place and then Mm -hmm. it kind of goes from there. Um, And yeah, I was was doing it a little bit. I I, I can't really say I enjoy the process. I didn't didn't Mm -hmm. really like it. It was, there's so much people like you come to a casting and you might sit there for three hours and then you have to run somewhere else because you're always late and there's a million castings and there are some casting directors that'll be like okay we're gonna do a casting now at 12 uh 12 a.m and they just call all the models you might be in bed and your agent is like you need to go now and you need to like run off this casting you might sit there until 3 a.m until it's your turn And the person might just look at your card and go, mm, thanks, next. <laughs> so <laughs> what, is, what are you saying? Like, can you explain to me? So for example, is it like like a fashion week in some city and you go there and you go yeah. through castings for different brands, but for the same show? No. So all the brands have different shows. Okay. So it's different shows, but there is casting directors. But it's like it's under like a fashion week in Milan. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's within a certain... Yeah. Yeah concept I Event, guess basically. yes yes. <laughs> yes but they're all in different places okay. and different brands and but this is like a hot spot right now for models and everyone goes there yes it's oh a my bit, god it's a, bit, it's a bit like that if you're doing catwalk right now I, yeah. i haven't gone for years and i never really was doing that but i have friends who used to do it like every but year. also like you going there spending your own money I, i'm guessing yeah. for accommodation for tickets for everything mm-hmm. and hope that you will be cast yeah and it will be worth it mm-hmm yeah oh my god but also like fashion week is not really about money like Mm -hmm. nobody really like makes money unless you're like doing a lot of shows i think that you might make money but it's not like a high paid job it's more for promotion like editorial (laughs) exactly you're starting to get the hang of this (laughs) maybe so 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 it's more like that so you you because if you get costed in the big shows and you do the catwalk for them Mm. it's really then you're like a cool cool model yeah. so you'll get books for like a lot of other things and they might pick you up from there and have you do the campaign and like it's a really if you want to do high fashion it's the way to go like you, you do the catwalks then mm-hmm. like more or less um i would say what's high fashion i know it's such a 
vague. Well, it's kind of like all the. So, I don't know how to put that into words. That's so interesting. It's like Prada, Gucci, Dior, like、mm. all of that, and like it would be considered high fashion and high fashion houses.、Mm. And I guess does it come down to like it's not really the price tag. I don't know. It's like expensive. It's not for the public.、Mm. I guess it's not like H and M, you know, Primark.、Uh, mm. You know, it's 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 something quite dream. But basically, you are getting into that market and doing different types of jobs for those kind of clients. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's like a different. But you build. You, you did some huge brands as well. Yeah. Well, I worked with like big brands, but I never did really high fashion. Like I, I've shot for loads of editorials、mm. and like done Vogue and like all like that. It's also、yeah. considered high fashion, but I was never doing like. Prada and、mm. and all that, and I think, and I was not really doing the catwalks. Like it's still, I was, I was always leaning on the commercial side. And like, for example, I would say, like for example, Ralph Lauren, which I worked with,、yeah. um, and I did a fashion week thing with them as well. They're still, they're, they're like obviously a big brand, but they're still on the commercial side in a way.、Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I can't.、Mm. It's like it's a, it's a vague. Yeah. So there's a fine line, basically, because they、yeah. they might also have more commercial shoots. They are a bit and, more commercial, I would say, yeah, rather yeah. than Prada or something、yeah. like. There's still you you know people might own Ralph Lauren, but、mm-hmm. you don't necessarily go and buy Prada. So I asked you about like what's your favorite type of work, but were there any any projects that you regret now doing? <laughs> like. <laughs> Damage me, like damage my image. Maybe, yeah. Or, or your image, or your your <laughs> mental health, or whatever. <laughs> or just looking、yeah. like, oh my god, oh, no, why did I do that? Oh no! <laughs> It does happen、mm. that you get the photos and you're just like,、mm. no. <laughs> <laughs> But then you、um, can't do nothing with it because it's just like do... that's late. <laughs> exactly, you、yeah. is not your. Right, really,、yeah. as a model to go. I don't like that photo. Can、yeah. you take it down? And you like, basically already signed some kind of release agreement or whatever. Yeah, yeah I, like it's it's one of those things where it just, yeah, that's the thing when you do modeling, right? Because you go to the set and、mm-hmm. you get the clothes and you get the makeup and the light is set、mm-hmm. and they just you need to like trust the process、yeah. and kind of be okay with whatever comes out because you don't get to choose the photos, you don't get to like it's out of your hands、mm-hmm. all of it and. So when you get photos that you're a bit like, oh god, this is not great,、mm. then you kind of just have to forget about it because like there's nothing you can do,、yeah. and they might be on social media or wherever, like they can be anywhere, right, in magazines.、Um, but I feel like fashion is so fast that、mm. it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's it's gone the next people day. People will forget about it in a month when there's、yeah. a new campaign out or、yeah. there's a new. I wish I had a concrete example、yeah. for you, but it yeah, might it might、okay. come back. I know the feeling of that.、Yeah. Like it does definitely happens.、Yeah. Um, are there other without naming the brands? But are there any brands that you know like it's always always a nightmare to work with? A nightmare to work with.、Yeah. Oh.、Um, or it only all, all, only depends on the actual crew on this actual campaign. Yeah. No. There is some. I would say there is some when you do ecom, which is. Like you go on a website and you shop online.、Mm-hmm. Whatever you buy in the clothes, there is usually models、yes. in them. That's ecom, and、uh, that can be a lot, a lot, a lot to shoot. Like a crazy amount I sometimes.、Imagine. Yeah, I remember.、And、I remember. I was. I was. I remember. I was looking for some jeans. I think on on ASOS or some other site like that. And basically, you just like watching. Like, oh, this same dude. He <laughs> he was like in twelve different pairs of jeans. And I'm pretty sure jeans. That's not the only thing that he did this day. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh my God. So there is there is some clients which would have an insane shot count, meaning things to shoot,、mm-hmm. uh, and they have that as a standard. So when you go there. They will have that shop count, and it can be like seventy items a day or something like this, and it is mad. Like, and that when it gets to that, it's like you can't do anything with it. You literally just throwing the clothes on, take a shot, side back, next one. Like, you know, it's you're like a robot. I feel、mm-hmm. like at that point, and nobody in the team can really do anything they're、mm-hmm. supposed to be doing. You're just there. Like the style is just like throwing clothes. You're just standing there. The photographer's like, you know, quickly. 
<laughs> just the, like, like with, with the remote somewhere in the corner. There is like, Ding. there's no, nobody's, yeah. you know, talent is really shining through. It's just like, let's get this shit done. Mm. Um, and that can be really difficult. Like it can be so draining. And, yeah. and those are probably the hardest working days yeah. when it's a lot and you're just like bashing it out and you can tell everyone is tired. Nobody's really enjoying it. And no one cares. And nobody really, you know, and then, but you have the client who cares a lot and might be like, mm, no, but they, they, they don't care about you. They care about the shots. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, it, yeah. And then, but the client might still be very particular and be like, we want this to be like editorial, like, or we want it to look cool. And it's like, well, we can't do 70 shots a day then yeah. if you want it to look cool. Like, <laughs> so picky, picky client with a lot of shoot shots to get done is probably the, Mm. that's the hard ones and there are brands <laughs> that you know like this will be like this today for sure yes yeah. all right because that, that's the way they do it <laughs> <laughs> how long is the life of a model i mean i don't mean like life life but you know, <laughs> when do life. we die <laughs> um <laughs> <I'm a lot laughs> <shock>. <laughs> Um, that's a good question. I think that's also something that's changing a lot. Mm -hmm. So it used to be retirement by like 30. So I would have been in my last days kind of soon. I'm kind of giving my age away now. Uh <laughs> I, I told you before, um, I told you before when I yeah. found out how old you are, I was a bit confused because I thought <laughs> that you were like at least six years younger. Right? Are you a vampire? <laughs> Thank you. Um, no, I, I think this has changed a lot. So it used to be like by the age of 30, you're like done. Um, but I think nowadays, like I will be on shoots and there will be like women that are in their 50s or 60s or mid 40s. And they, they're like, I'm working amazingly. Like, mm -hmm. like the market is really, there's a lot of, lot of it now. And I can see it as well. If I do some shopping online or for like beauty, like skincare, there's a lot of women now with like wrinkles and gray hair, which is awesome. Like, because suddenly someone realized, you know what? We actually need to sell stuff to people who are like in their 60s too. Exactly. Not only 18 year olds <laughs> who don't really care about their skin because it's perfect. Exactly. And that's ridiculous because it used to be like that, you know, anti-wrinkle cream with, and it's like a 22 year old modeling it. And yeah. It's like, <laughs> come on, <laughs> we don't. <laughs> We don't need this um but and also i quite like it like i love it aesthetically like a, an older woman meaning like maybe she's in her 50s 60s like white hair bit of like you know a bit of wrinkles whatever i think it looks beautiful mm. like i like seeing it mm. and i don't know if that's because i'm in this industry or whatever i don't think so i think everybody appreciates it and i think it looks awesome so i think it's changing are there still but, like for, for for older models are there still uh those body standards or is kind of like fading more? no i think there is still definitely a body yeah. standard i would say i i would say i don't know but mm -hmm. the the models i work with and the models i see working they still have quite an awesome body i mm -hmm. wouldn't say they have the typical 60 year old <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately yeah, not yeah, there yet yeah. uh they still look amazing and they probably i would assume there are they are people that done modeling when they were younger and like it's i don't think they some some might you know mm. be at 50 and be like i'm gonna do modeling now i mean maybe well like like boo like bullet exactly. magnet like who is on the <laughs> podcast Jen it was really nice it was a good episode it is someone who retired from accounting and then became a model did a cat like can walk in milan exactly. <laughs> it's like he worked on like the big 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 brands and vogue and like it's just it's insane so like check the episode by the way if you're enjoying the episode by now like subscribe comment you, you are, do you have any experience with modeling or maybe you're considering modeling and uh, you know <laughs> or don't <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah yeah it's 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 weird it's weird like but it's good that it's changing which is like very nice yeah. because i think like there is i do believe there is nothing wrong in having you know beautiful people doing modeling jobs because that's their job and like the day their job is like to you know to look after themselves and sometimes being like you know the setting up like beauty standards that's a little bit unreachable for simple folk like me but at the same time it's good that we do expand and include more people who look like normal people like it's also neat i think like that there's time and place for for 
both. Mm. So yeah. But I also think you can be so beautiful when you're 60. Yeah. Like you know what I mean. I don't think that's not beautiful. I can. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Soon, another Soon twenty years, and we'll check. <laughs> check so. it out. I'll probably lose my hair by then. But <laughs> yeah, <it'll be> <laughs> Look, that that's all really interesting. I, I, I'm pretty sure, like, we could talk about this even more. But I want to talk about you moving around the world and how where where did, like first you went to Paris. Yes. Yes. How did it happen? How was it for you for like just going somewhere suddenly when you were seventeen? You said. Yeah. <laughs> just. Going somewhere where you have to wash your clothes <laughs> yourself. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That was that. I think it was like I don't think the travel itself scared me. It wasn't mm. like oh my god, I'm gonna you know go to a different country. Like I've traveled before with my family mm. a lot and stuff like that. But you would but have to live there. Exactly. Without knowing language, do you, yeah. do, you do you speak oh, French? No, I'm terrible. <laughs> I'm so bad. Like it's it's a whole. It's a whole thing. I yeah. can't even try to pronounce anything, <laughs> which is <laughs> not great because you should learn the language, I guess. Um, yeah. And and yeah, so I don't know. It's it was one of those things that I wasn't. I can't remember. I wasn't particularly nervous or scared. It was not like that. I think I was just really excited to go. Um, the thought. I don't think I thought it through as much. It was more like, yeah, I'll go to Paris. That's awesome. And then I got there and. I remember actually arriving and I was like, I need to eat dinner. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I'm at the table, there is no plate with food. What's going on? <laughs> um, and I had a model friend. I mean, I just met her. I say mm. friend. I probably knew her for five minutes. She mm. was in the apartment, a little bit older than me. Not much, but she was a bit older. Who like, I, she saw my confusion and I was just like, I need to like buy groceries or something. <laughs> and uh, she was like, okay, we'll sort this out. And she, I remember she took me to like McDonald's and I bought some food there and, and that was my dinner. And I was very, like, <laughs> very mod, you know, modelly choice of food. <laughs> yes. Um, and I was just, yeah, I remember I felt really lost when mm. I arrived and I was a bit like, oh, right, okay. I'm in this country, I don't know anyone, I need to cook food and like, I need to sort this out. You know? But do, do you get some kind of money allowance to buy you, food and stuff? So you can, it's called like pocket money. Uh -huh. So you can do that. So your agency, you can like make that deal with them and they will basically give you a certain amount of money hmm. per week. Uh, but my mom, uh, bless her, was very nice. And she was like, no, I rather give you the money and you pay me back. Because agencies will always, you know, they might add some interest mm -hmm. and they, you know, there's there's a whole thing around it. So she was like, no, I want you to, you know, yeah. have as little money to pay back as possible. Independency on that. So yeah. she basically gave me pocket money, my mm -hmm. mom, and I was paying her back when I was earning money. So, yeah, that was really nice of her. But there is that way as well. So you could go completely broke. Yeah. Like, because a lot of models don't have a lot of money when they start out and they might be from countries where they're poor, like, you know, like poorer countries, I mean, than Sweden, like yeah, coming yeah. from different life circumstances and uh, you might have no money and there's still the way then to go because the agencies will, will sort you out. Mm -hmm. But usually it comes with a bit of a price, like you of might course. pay some extra, you might not know how much you're spending and then you start working and all your money goes to the agency because mm -hmm. you've, taken so much money like you know there's a whole you need to be a bit careful with the whole yeah. thing and uh, what happens if for example like you so ag agency took you like they brought you to this country like for example you brought to paris and you live there you try to book jobs and then you can't really book anything and then what <laughs> they at some point they say like yeah now i'm sorry fuck off like <laughs> we don't care about you anymore <laughs> well that's a funny thing because like if sometimes i feel like if you're staying, especially with the agency, like they don't care if you don't work. They kind of just want you around because it doesn't really cost them anything. I mean, if they if they're paying for your house and everything, I guess you are a little bit of an expense for them. Mm -hmm. But they also know as soon as you get a job, all the money is going to go to them. Yeah. So it's a bit of a like because for them it's always good if you're around because it means that. There's a higher chance, yeah. yes, exactly, to get a job. Mm. So 
I find it more the opposite. I'm usually like when I've been in those kind of like、mm. dry <laughs>、mm. states where there's like no work, and you're like, "What the hell is going on? I'm not working." Because that happens.、Um, I'm usually the one being like to my agency, going, "What the hell is going on? Like,、mm. should I go somewhere else? Like,、mm. da, 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 like,、mm. and they're always very chill. There's always like,、oh, you know, it's gonna change. It's slow right now. Like, I would say agencies rarely. Go get the fuck out!、Yeah. Oh, <laughs> like、oh. it's not that much now. I wouldn't、yeah. say they can drop you if you're not working for ever.、Yeah. Like they could, but、yeah. for them,、They're、like you know what? It's been thirty <laughs> years <laughs> <It's> <laughs> without any jobs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, and、uh, how how was it? What, what was your experience of like for how long did you live in Paris? Well, I I was probably there just for like ten days when I first and got the, there. Well, first time. Because yeah, because of I was in school, so I、mm-hmm. had to get back. I think it was one of those breaks that we had a week off, and I stayed a little bit longer, and I got back. Like we kind of sorted out like that.、Um, so Paris, I lived. I I think the longest I lived in Paris was maybe just a month or two,、uh, but I was in Milan for. I want to say almost half a year, but、mm. that was one of my first like actual trip. Like when I graduated,、yeah. I went to Milan. Like that's where I went to live,、uh, and I was there for a few months. I went home for a few weeks, and then I went back, and it was that kind of thing. How was it? It was it was fun. It was、mm. more like just that one year. I feel like I already changed a lot. Like going from being you know first time living on my own in your country. Then I and then in that time between, I also lived in London for a little bit,、mm. like just for a few weeks as well.、Um, so I've had a little bit of experience. I got to Milan and I felt a bit more like I knew a little bit what was going on, right?、Mm. Um, but I was in a model flat, which was it's a whole thing. It's like you share a room with a person you never met. Like some girls even shared a bed. That's、yeah. how bad it was, and、oh. you don't even know them. Like.、Yeah. It's a bit weird. It might, yeah, I, I,、um, it might be, yeah. So <laughs> I didn't, but I had like I think I had two roommates. So I had a flat with two other girls, but you're sleeping basically in the same room.、Mm-hmm. Uh, tiny kitchen. It's like the the place in in Milan. It's um, it's a model apartments, but they have them in a hotel. So it's like a hotel room that you live、mm. in. Basically, it's not even a, like a proper apartment. Yeah.、Uh, and you, it's tiny fridge. Like everything is quiet. You know, it's not really hundred percent functional. Yeah.、Um, so, but you kind of I don't know maybe because I was so young it didn't bother me. Like it was、yeah. like I'm just here to like work and explore. No, yeah, it's I, fine. I think, you know. I think when you're young, it's much easier. Like, and you're kind of with people who do the same stuff, and you kind of like on the same. Wave almost. Well, I mean, to a degree.、Yeah. Like, I. It's how. What was the experience? Because still, like living with people you don't know, it can become very kind of you know, competitive in a way, or like I, I don't know, like there's like maybe some, some drama happening. <laughs> Absolutely.、Yeah. I mean, I think I was quite lucky. I tended to make really good friends、mm-hmm. out of the people I lived with, and there are girls that I still have on Instagram, and I might message every now and then.、Mm-hmm. Like, I think I was. Fairly lucky, like in that sense.、Um, but you definitely can you can end up with anyone, and some people are crazy. and And I was talking to the, about this the other day with someone, and I think it's because the thing with modeling is like we all have something in common. We're here to do modeling, but it has nothing to do with us as humans.、Yeah. It's like I was born looking like this, and that's why we're here. Like there's no, <laughs> you know, there's no. Yeah. Brain like connection, if that yeah, makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not like I'm good at this, and therefore you know you're like minded, or、mm-hmm. no. It could be anyone, and they could act or behave or like or do、mm-hmm. anything. Because the only reason you're in the space together is because the way that you look. Yeah. So it's a bit of an interesting one, and I think that's why you get such a diverse、mm-hmm. pool of people doing it. Um, but I think there is definitely that competitiveness. I have felt that when I lived in certain like model apartments, it was a bit like, you know, girls really asking, "What's your schedule like tomorrow?" and like really want to know and be、mm. very like nosy and showing off maybe with what they were doing in a, in a way which is you should be able to share and I think、yeah. it's good to talk about it. But you know, you can feel the difference in. Why you're asking, or how you're asking, and, and a bit like that. So interesting. It was very. That I think one of my main issues was the food bit because I could really feel that when I was living in a mall apartment that it was a lot of, 
looking around what people were eating and judging and, yeah. and everybody was you know it was very like someone was on a diet just eating cherries drinking water and someone else wanted to have a fish and chips and yeah. it was kind of like i felt yeah. that it was a weird that was a weird thing and i hated that it's like so not relaxing to be in like you just want to eat your food and do the yeah. thing and not feel judged for it <laughs> like <laughs> especially when you're home you know it's like come on and and then another interesting thing with model apartments is that some of them there's a booker living with you so it could be at the agency um one of the bookers usually like a junior one so like a new new one uh lives in the model apartment kind of for free or like very cheap which mm -hmm. is why they do it and to kind of keep a little bit of an eye i guess on the models but that also makes you feel like you're always at work because once you're mm -hmm. home your booker is there like you know it's a yeah. bit like it's a weird one <laughs> yeah i can imagine but yeah. but also considering there's like so many young people just live together like it could also go in the in the in the, some bad direction where you ever close to this kind of environment and how how did you protect yourself from all of this yeah no that is so true i think like if for example if you had a booker living with you mm -hmm. that was never really you know it wouldn't happen in yeah. the house or like anything like that um i would say though so because models are so young as well a lot of the time if you you go out or you want to do partying or drugs or whatever people are into it usually is with promoters mm -hmm. i'm sure you've heard about promoters it's not just for models they exist in the night night scene in general nightclub scene yeah so it's basically usually a guy who you know works with taking beautiful women out to clubs because they get paid because the clubs pay them to bring them there yeah in club, like a club it kind of attracts more exactly you actually pay for something so that's yeah. kind of the way it works and that's a lot a lot of that in the modeling world so mm -hmm that was more i wouldn't say i never felt like i was in the house and people were you know drinking and doing drugs no it wasn't like that it was more some people would go out a lot with promoters and like i've been out with promoters it's like something most models have because mm -hmm. it's kind of how you socialize and you meet a lot of other people like it's it is i would say most people have been out with them and it's nice because you get like free food free yeah. drinks all that but it can also be a very weird setting and i i don't go out with promoters anymore yeah. because it's a it's a weird it's a little bit like a working commitment you're like you know you're there you know you're not paying for anything and you're kind of supposed to be at this certain table you're not like like allowed to leave because this is the mm -hmm. table that you're you know you're supposed to be at because that's what the clubs kind of rule is like yeah. it's a bit of a like, can, can you get in a situation weird. when like there are some things expected from you because you get into a situation that are not just promoting yeah no i have never been in that situation but i i feel like it should maybe it does happen mm -hmm. i can see that being a thing happening and that's obviously yeah. terrible um but i do i feel like it's never been in a way of like i feel like something expected from me with with another person but you feel like there's something expected from you as in you know you need to be there and have be fun. fun exactly like you you know you need to it's like you can't just go and be yourself or like mm. if i want to go talk to that person over there in this other table mm. and just leave you guys you can't really because you're supposed to, you know it's like mm. it's a bit of a weird and nowadays i don't really enjoy the feeling of like oh i owe someone something yeah. like i'm here everyone's paid for so i need to like i i wouldn't do that now mm. no but that's in, that i would say that's more the place where people might have done you know drugs or dr like you can drink because mm. everything is free like yeah. all that stuff but it can be fun as well no of course yeah i'm not yeah. saying that yeah. uh and it also like it took me to some amazing places so like i'm really happy that i got the opportunity i remember it, in new york it was my first time there and we got invited to Heidi Klum's uh, Halloween party and it was one of those things like you I would never think I would ever go there mm -hmm. right and it was with a promoter which was a good friend of ours mm -hmm. so so we went with him and he a lot of our friends were going out with him um and yeah I ended up I was so drunk though which I really regret because <laughs> <laughs> 
because it was all these like A-list celebrities and I was like, I can't, I remember it, but like vaguely, <laughs> I was really drunk oh. and it was like Katy Perry at like the table next to me and it was just, yeah. I'm like, oh God, but it was, you know, the decisions of like mm. a 21 year old, you're mm. just like, woo. I mean, you have to go, like you have to have but, some fun in moderation, like, yeah. but you know, we, we all been in the situations, most of us at least, uh, in situations where you're like, ah, that, that, these five shots were too, too much. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'm done with everything else. Yeah. And so, 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 so have you met Heidi Klum? Well, no, not, not technically really. not. Like she obviously hosted a party. Yeah. So, you know, we saw her, like they do this little like red carpet mm -hmm. thing where they do the photos. She always has these like crazy Halloween costumes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever seen, this is kind of like a thing, like yeah. on social media and everything. I don't know if you've seen it. But <laughs> that was never invited, so I never, never um, kind of. But you know, yeah, look checked. it up. Halloween, like Halloween Heidi Klum costume, you will get an amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, she does so many good ones. Nice. Uh, so I kind of saw her more on the carpet, but it wasn't like I, I wasn't personally invited by her. Yeah. I was there because like yeah. <laughs> the promoter worked at the club who was like, you know, his work was to mm. bring us there basically. But he was more of a friend, so it was not, it didn't feel weird in that sense it mm -hmm. wasn't you know we could do whatever we wanted it was yeah. not like that i kind of partied with these people but not in a way that i'm like i'm hanging out with you guys mm -hmm. like they were there yeah. you kind of like see them they're around but and and all these things which now i'm like that's a that's a fun memory yeah. it's, it's a cool memory of course yeah. but and they were but that was a good setting and then there is bad settings with promoters mm -hmm. so you you know you need to kind of feel your way into what is what's good what's bad mm -hmm. And that kind of thing. But I have to say, I think I've been quite protected, yeah, from yeah. the whole drug thing, because there can be a lot of drugs, I yeah. think. And I think just because I don't do drugs, so I feel like maybe that's also why I haven't seen much mm -hmm. of it. But if I was into it, maybe I would have been, you know. Yeah. You kind of find what you see. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, might be that. All right, all right. So, um, again, Paris, Milan, New York, London, Stockholm. Yes. Tell me a little bit more about experiences in each of those cities and what is the difference in the industry? I lived in London for seven years, right? So I feel like my actual experience from the other cities might be a bit dated. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I just want to say that already. Yeah. Um, but I would say in general, I remember living in New York and there it's for me somehow it feels even bigger than london it's like it's it's a really uh, aggressive city like people are on a run there it's mm -hmm. like there's no time to waste it's always like did, did it, like things happening constantly uh a lot of people shouting at you you get so used to getting shouted at like like people just yell the weirdest shit at you all the time and you yeah. just kind of brush it off and i remember going back and i was going back just for like two months to work I hadn't been for a little bit and I was just like, I was like really, I took it too hard. And mm. I was like, it's, this is okay, it's New York. <laughs> <laughs> I need to remember this is New York. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, it, but that's just the city that doesn't have to do with modeling. Um, modeling wise, for me, I feel like in New York, in general, it's quite hard to work in New York. Yeah. That's something I feel like most models tend to feel that you go to New York, you might work quite a lot in Europe and you go to New York and you're like, why am I not working? This can be the case and it has happened to me, but I was quite lucky when I moved there. I worked quite a lot straight away, um, but it's, it's, I feel like it's famous for it. You might go there and do, not do anything. Why? So some people say it's a hard market to get into. And once you do, you kind of, it kind of unfolds. But Why is it like, is, is it more oversaturated with models as well? Yeah, like, is it that's... More I don't know. I, or different standards? Do they like? Do they have actually different standards in different countries? Yeah. Or maybe different beauty standards? But, yeah. Is it, yeah. There's a lot of that, those things, I would say. Each country have a bit of their own thing. Um, and I don't know if in New York it's kind of like, it's supposed to kind of be like the top, like of all the cities, New mm. York is kind of like what a lot of people strive to get to. because. You need to get your work visa. You need to like, it's a hard process to actually manage to go there. Um, and I don't know if, yeah, if people are just super picky and the top, top models are there so mm. that the, like the people you're competing with is, it's hard, you know, uh, I don't know if that could be a reason or 
I never, I actually don't know why it's been like this, but it's kind of famous in a in way for it that you might go and you don't work for a while until, mm-hmm. you know, you kind of get into it. But it's in general, I would say it's a bit more like glam, not like this is when I used to live there and it's a while ago now, but it was always like fake hair, fake nails, the mm-hmm. lashes. It was a lot of these things. Not always, but mm. it happened quite often on shoots. Whereas a place like London, I barely ever had any of that mm. on me on a shoot. And I remember feeling quite disconnected from it. So when I was shooting and I got all these glam, because I feel like in America, they are a bit more glam mm-hmm. in general. Like the aesthetic is a bit more yeah. than a place like London, um, where here it's a bit more, not like grudgy, but like, you know, a bit like natural. Grounded. Yeah. I don't know the yeah, I yeah. don't know, but there was something I really noticed and I've started to feel disconnected from my work because I was in this like all these things and I didn't feel pretty. Like I was like this is not really how I want to be portrayed mm-hmm. as a model or like how I necessarily like to look on like and it you know it's fine if that's every now and then it can be really fun to just Mm. get like crazy glam on and be like yeah let's do this Mm. but if it's all the time and quite what people want i i just i really and when it's very different from real you yeah you kind of start start to feel like (laughs) so if they think this is pretty then probably this is not (laughs) yeah i don't know i i felt more like i just didn't connect with photos i was a bit like I don't know. And sometimes I did some amazing shoots in yeah. New York as well. So I'm not saying all of them, but there was definitely more of that. And I really missed, because I remember shooting in London, I always loved most of the photos and the aesthetics. And it was very, it's always very, it's always been quite scaled back in general, I would say, mm. in London, for, for, for example. And I remember going back to London and starting to shoot and work here. And I was just like, yeah, now I actually enjoy and like I can. S- like the photos like are more in line with what I like Mm -hmm. and that's also sometimes it's important I think I know we have to be able to do anything more Mm -hmm. or less but it's also important to sometimes be like yeah I really like this I'm liking what I'm doing I can Mm -hmm. vibe with this you know it's it's it goes both ways um and yeah I think Paris in general is famous to be the strictest city yeah with the highest standards and Mm -hmm. It obviously have all the Chanel, Dior, like all of these houses and people there are just, I feel like people in Paris are just quite brutal in general. Mm -hmm. Like it's a bit of a harsh environment and um, they are more, they're not as sugar coating with things. People in London are so nice and I love that. But sometimes you might want to know the truth. (laughs) Exactly. You might spill over to like... (laughs) Are we actually mm. thinking this is yeah. good or? <laughs> or behind my back, you'll fire me. But they yeah. are, in general, I love shooting in London because people are very welcoming and very lovely. Like, not just in the way that like, oh, they give me lots of compliments. It's not like that. It's more like the connection that you get with people, I think, when you're on set. Because people are very open, I mm-hmm. find. I know people say that British people are closed off, but I find them really open like it could be I know that like it's not that they enjoy saying negative things but I quite like that sometimes that it's not just like because in New York people are very positive all the time and it's not really in the culture to talk about things that are not great Mm -hmm. so everything is always really good there (laughs) Uh, (laughs) and you kind of just have these shallow conversations all the time and I love that sometimes I go to work in London and someone just says something like, I don't know, oh, my dog shit on my mat this morning. Sorry, I'm late or something. And I'm just like, yes, I love that. This is real. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know? I agree. Um, so that's been a big difference, I think, mm-hmm. with working. And money-wise, is there like, you, like, is it, I, I understand it depends on like on this particular campaign or brand, but in general, like where is the, where, which places there's like the most money for models um i think people tend to say america Mm -hmm. um for me i feel like both america and london for me is kind of been as good Mm -hmm. i think both have a good rate Mm -hmm. Uh, but i know in america they tend to say it's a bit more but i say that 
when because it, it's dollars. So when I live in London, yeah. you know, if I would go to work there, it kind of becomes like if you compare the rates like that, I mm -hmm. think it's about the same. Mm -hmm. um, but also you have obviously less tax in the US and the yeah. agency takes a bit less. So you kind of end up with a bit more in the end of the day. Um, but the rates, yeah, I would say New York or London, but to me, they're kind of equally, mm -hmm. yeah, good. Mm -hmm. And re reflecting back now on your uh, modeling career, are you happy with, with, with your choice? Yes. Yeah. I am. I really am. It's one of those things I'm like, what would my life be like if I didn't do this? Because mm -hmm. it, it's changed my whole life. It's like mm -hmm. where I live, my partner, my friends. Uh, and now the fact that, for example, I'm going into acting, it kind of stems from doing modeling because yeah. I wouldn't live here otherwise. And I probably wouldn't have started doing acting if I lived in Sweden. Mm. I really don't think so. And uh, just the amount of people I've met and yeah, I'm, I'm personally very, very like thankful mm -hmm. that I've got into it and that I'm still doing it. What would be your advice to young people or maybe not so young who are thinking about modeling? Like, first of all, step by step, what do you definitely need to do before you start doing this? And how, how you get into this? Um, if you're not being scouted online by yeah. some... <laughs> if you don't get cold. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Um, I think, I mean, social media is amazing for these kind of things nowadays. And a lot of agencies do open call days. So you can look up uh, the agencies. There is, I'm, like, if you Google, you can get a list of, like, agencies um, and the different, maybe, like, the top ones and the less, you know, there's all different levels of agencies and uh, they usually have an open call day so you can just go there uh, literally to the agency and they will see you and they will get like some photos taken of you talk to you and it's a chance to 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 be seen basically uh, and if you don't want to do that because that can be scary <laughs> uh, you can always send them an email so they, they I feel like more or less they're always scouting so you can always just send an email if you go on the website they will have an email there it's sometimes a scouting one and you just send your images and, and an email and it can be hard because it could be 200 emails a week that somebody mm. has to go through and maybe you're not going to get seen um, but that is a really good way i think you just need to like just get your head out there and just approach mm. It's really scary. It is very scary because there's also obviously your look and it's like, it can be very personal in a way. And I understand that it's not the easiest, but I would say just, yeah. And, and people are looking all the time, I think. So don't be scared to, like, if they like you, that's just great because mm -hmm. they won't. They want you if you know there's money for them yeah. so <laughs> just in general what to be aware of when you start your modeling career that like definitely don't get into this trap i would say pay for like because i've heard of these like you need to like pay almost like a package to like get test shots done to like be seen like people basically paying to do modeling to someone who almost sells it as like a starting package. And I- And position themselves as an agency. <laughs> yes, kind of. And that to me doesn't sound right. I don't know, I, I started so long ago now that maybe mm. this has changed by now, but I feel like, cause you do, you do have to pay for test shoots sometimes. Yeah. It happens even through the agencies, but it shouldn't be like, here, pay us 600 pounds and we get two test shots and we send you out and we'll see how it goes. Like an agency should be taking you on board and be like, we believe in you and we're going to make this work. And then you go from there and you mm -hmm. might do some, some paid shots, some not, you go to castings, you, it shouldn't have to be that kind of like, pay us this money and we see how it goes. Like mm -hmm. it should be a, a movement together, I think. Mm -hmm. um, because it's so many things like that out there, I'm sure that, you know, people promising pay us this much and we're going to, you know, you're going to be seen here or I'm, sh I'm sure there is. Yeah, and, yeah. I, I know. I know that there is such a thing as well in acting world. So if you are a beginning actor <laughs> and there is an agency that they require you to pay them to get on their books, don't. It's a scam. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> you don't pay to the agency. They actually making money by, you know, getting jobs 
for you, so you yeah. don't pay them unless they get a job. So yeah. exactly, it's a bit the it's the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Acting. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why am I getting into this? Oh yeah. God, it is. It's a funny one because I did a bit of theater when I was a kid. Mm. Hobby theater. School but, or no, like on the side after school, but like amateur level <laughs> nothing just because i enjoyed it um and i was doing films with my sister when i was younger because mm -hmm. she was loved directing and filming so we were like a little team so i was her actress is she older sister or she's sister? older or she's five years yeah. older yeah. um so yeah we were like a little production at home so i was the actress she was a director filmmaker like and anything, she was <laughs> anything that you still have yes I yes do. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's cute. <laughs> Let's okay. put it that way. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. It's not the most quality material. Um, but she was writing scripts and everything and it was just really, it was really fun. I enjoyed it so much. And then I kind of grew out of acting is the wrong word. I feel like maybe I got a bit insecure because kids started to maybe comment or say that you're a bit weird or what you're doing you know like you started to have a bit and maybe it wasn't as cool to go to theater class yeah. maybe you want to hang out with your cool friends in this parking lot i don't know yeah. you know it was one of those like <laughs> i don't know kids yeah. stuff teenage yeah. stuff so i stopped acting completely um and i never did it seriously back then anyway but it became like a, a wall for me like i it was a hurdle to get over so I became terrified of the idea. I was like, that terrifies me. Like even going to an acting class, I was like, I don't know how people do it. Like it was one of the scariest places I could ever imagine myself. It was really, I really made it a thing. Mm -hmm. And it bothered me so much because I had a little voice inside of me that was kind of like, I want to try it. But then I had this massive thing of like, oh my God, it's going to be so embarrassing and you're going to be so shit. And I don't know. I made a thing out of it. And then I met Imogen, which is, uh, she was doing acting teaching with Lee uh, at the time. And I met her at a job because she's doing modeling as well. Uh, and we were shooting together and started chatting. And she was like telling me she was an acting teacher. Mm. And um, I told her about my fears mm -hmm. <laughs> but that I've considered going. Um, and she basically managed to get me to a place where I understand that it's okay to not know what you're doing. Yeah. You can just go there and it's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. um, so it took me like another month or two to sign up. And I remember sending like loads of messages to Lee, be like, I don't know, I'm sorry, I might look like, you know, being really like back and forth with my payment, not really sending it. Yeah. And like the last date, I just sent it. I was like, oh shit, now I need to go. Um, and I went and it was a huge group. It was one of those, like, I feel like every single, maybe you were there. I, I do remember that yeah. when I, because I was mostly doing classes with Lee, but then I switched to Imogen. Mm. I remember like the very first class I, I did, with, did with Imogen, we actually did a scene together. Oh, I didn't, yeah. I'm not sure, if, I don't remember where it was from, but we were playing kind of like boyfriend, girlfriend. Yeah. I don't remember what, what it was from, but yeah. Um, Yes, I remember the class. I don't remember the script as well. Yeah. But yeah, it was like a huge class. Mm -hmm. It was a massive one. And I felt like all the oldies from, from Working Actor Studio was there. Like yeah. all the like experience that I was just like, oh my God, what am I doing? Um, but I just did it. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, this was really fun. And I didn't get laughed at. And no. I was okay, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> it was fine. If you, if you go into the acting class <laughs> yeah. and you're a beginner and people laugh at you, not because it's a funny scene, but because like, <laughs> it's a bad class, don't go there. <laughs> don't go there. Never. <laughs> it never happens in the working actor studio. Like yeah. it's, well, at least when I was there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yeah. now, no. So, and it just from there, it was like, it was this little, not like, it just unlocked something in me, I think. And I was just like, okay, I can maybe do this. Like yeah. I can go to acting classes and I enjoy it. And it was a little bit of a stepping thing of just going at first. I wasn't really planning, oh, I'm gonna do acting mm -hmm. full time or anything like that. It was just, I really enjoyed it. And I was so happy that yeah. I it overcome that fear basically. And and finding something that I enjoy so much, cause that's hard. Sometimes when you're a grown up, you're a bit like, what are my hobbies? <laughs> like, what am I doing? Um, and I just found this thing that was like, I really love this. Yeah. And it was so cool. And 
it progressed from there and then I got the agency and 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 now I'm like I want to do acting it's just kind of been a natural progression from being something for my own personal development I don't mm-hmm. know to um being something that I actually want to do yeah. so it kind of came from there but I realized it's fucking hard it's mm-hmm. so hard so I'm not saying oh it's so easy I'm just gonna mm-hmm. become an actress tomorrow <laughs> like it takes time and it's hard work yeah. Yeah. and all that but I'm here for it and I yeah. think that shows like if you love it then you you're okay with that kind of yeah. thing yeah and, and I mean like look in, in these two years you I think you did huge progress and you are now signed with working actors agency as well right I yeah am. yeah how's it going <laughs> good yeah. no it's been a it's been a really good journey I mean it's an, a year and a half since I signed with them I think yeah. uh and I feel like a different person from when I first signed because yeah. I didn't even know what like self tape was yeah i was confused about the setup and the what i had to do and the camera mm. and like mm. all these things and now just the thing like that is so second nature and like i i remember like you know doing a scene and it was like because i i signed and i actually got a casting the same day i signed like i got an audition which was amazing <laughs> oh my god <laughs> some people wait for months some, some people wait for like a year yeah until they and do I remember, get yeah i remember it was like whoa that was quick <laughs> okay i'm doing this now yeah, yeah. um and yeah and i had to do this little scene and and it took me like the whole day and my mm. poor my boyfriend was just like laying on the floor by the end and he was just like are we done yet because i was just like <laughs> over and over like you know when you don't have any like it was hard because i never done it before and i was just like you basically I, don't have some kind of standards and limitations for yourself yeah, it's like know, it's something like after take 30 maybe you should stop it won't get better it, it may get worse actually exactly <laughs> like you should you should give yourself some kind of like limit at like what you do and you know but it's hard because when you yeah. just like and you never know like oh maybe maybe this they want this but like mm-hmm. especially when you're inexperienced like you have no idea how to kind of just do it your way i still struggle with that a lot and i yeah. was doing it for a while <laughs> no, and I so know. you kind of like and yeah especially with self-tapes because the difference like between self-tape and audition like for people who don't know is like self-tape is like when they send you the script and you're at home have to film yourself doing this do, doing a scene like and it's great if you have someone to read it with you because uh, you said like you were doing it mm-hmm. with your boyfriend i sometimes find myself doing it myself recording my voice as a reader Sorry. and it and it's just like it's you you lose this human connection <laughs> completely it's like it's hard it's like it's very different when you go to the audition in a room which i didn't do for years now mm-hmm. you actually do it with actual people <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you have like two takes maybe maybe three if you did all right job like yeah. in the right job yeah. At home, you can just like keep doing, keep doing, keep doing it, and you have no idea when to stop. And then you have so many options, and they're all kind of the same. <laughs> they're all kind of the same. Well, yeah, I yeah, that was me. I was lost. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, at the end, I sent something, but I felt very even like I remember even like because I've gone to class for about half a year. Yeah. I think it is, yes, by the time I got my agency, right? So I've done multiple classes in that time, but remembering lines and be at home and like do a tape, like I was just stressing out. And that's not a thing that you shouldn't be stressing out about the lines. There's other things to stress out about, but just a thing like that. And I feel like thinking that was a year and a half ago. And now that feels really natural to be like, oh, this is script. Like you just have the process and it doesn't feel scary that there are words <laughs> like yeah. that like there's more of a there's yeah it's super different so that's been i've been very it's been very good to like just just learn what 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 to do what this industry is a bit and like mm. getting good opportunities to do that with and you know getting booked sometimes and a lot of times not and that's fine <laughs> because i realized that's a big part of this job <laughs> the percentage of being hard. booked as an actor especially like beginner actor <laughs> it's hard i know mm. but i feel like it's been a good diver- like diversity of things like i've done some commercials short films you know feature films like there's a good 
like variety of things getting through. And I think that's been great too, because you know, you get the commercial at like auditions mm -hmm. and you're like, what the hell is this? <laughs> like, how am I gonna do that in my living room? <laughs> like yes. the weirdest, you know, yeah. it's raining and you're running to the bus, but then you slip on a banana and like, I don't know, like you yeah, know, it can yeah, be yeah. the, yeah. like, but you just have to learn to do it and somehow mm. get around it. And like, yeah, it's been, it's been, really i'm really thankful for mm -hmm. the for that and that they took me on board so soon i remember getting an email from them and i was just like me <laughs> <laughs> like i yeah should be signed what yeah. like it felt a bit like that and um i don't know it was it was oh yeah i'm very thankful that they just wanted to take me on board mm -hmm. basically and so i could start actually you know developing from going to class yeah yeah and so as a model you got used to you know looking at yourself on the sh like mo did, did you do any kind of modeling like with video yes yeah? there's a lot of video yeah nowadays especially mm -hmm. like a lot of shoots so so you you're used to watching yourself yes it wasn't it wasn't <laughs> a shock for you when you started acting no. you're like oh my god no no <laughs> okay. I, and i think it was to a point where because that's part of my job for like for 10 years mm -hmm. i'm like in front of the camera and then i see the photos or i see the videos mm -hmm. like i'm very used to that concept and also the thing of the camera i'm used to that like it, that was never a hurdle for me because i know a lot of people the issue is that there is a camera they're yeah. like oh my god i feel very Same. weird now <laughs> like <laughs> what do i do with my hands <laughs> yeah <I'm not. laughs> um so i was lucky with that 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 was kind of already yeah. you know done I uh, already got past that, but like the fact of not being aware of myself, that was the issue. Because my job is to be aware of myself when I'm in front of the camera as a model. Yeah. Like, what's my best angle? And like, how do I talk while looking really cool at the same time? Like, you know, it can be all of these things where you're just aware of yourself because that's your job. And going into acting, and I was like, I need to let go of that. I should not be thinking of what I look like. Like that's yes. the last thing you should be thinking about. <laughs> and um, you know, things like my best angle or whatever, which you've already encountered today. <laughs> what is my favorite I angle? I will not even comment on that because <laughs> this beautiful human thinks that she has the worst side of the, I mean, look. They are, <laughs> but anyway, we're not gonna get into that. Um, so it's one of those things that I was like, oh shit, I need to let go of these things. I yeah. didn't realize that I was thinking so much about it. And mm -hmm. and that, that took me some time and actually being okay to see myself on camera or like, you know, and not, because when you do modeling, you're like, you're not, you're like you're not a different person but you are not you since you're so aware of yourself you're not really looking the way you do yeah. in everyday life you know you do things that you know you know how it is if somebody's yeah. like we're gonna take a photo you do something little to kind of like mm. <laughs> look the best <laughs> portion of you <laughs> and um going into to acting and i just saw i had to see videos of me just being me you know actually me mm -hmm. um so that was a little bit weird in the beginning actually mm -hmm. i'd say but yeah just letting go but watching yourself act was it weird um yeah <laughs> like how, <laughs> a little bit. how a little bit are you harsh on yourself when you watch yourself act yes yeah but I'm hard on myself with anything. Yeah. So I think that's, most people are maybe, but I am. Yeah. Yes, it will take a lot for me to be like, that's good. <laughs> just, I'm just curious because it's, for me, yeah, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I think I, I, I got used to it. I think I became more objective when I'm watching myself, you know, and I look at my acting, mm -hmm. I got more objective, but because in the beginning I was like, oh. <laughs> That's not what I was doing. Yeah. Why this face does this thing when I, it was supposed to be something completely different? Yeah. <laughs> Is it the same? Um, yeah, I mean, in a way, like little, I think more like little fidgets and movements and like, maybe I'm touching my hair a lot. And I'm like, oh, was I doing that? Mm -hmm. Like little things like that, yeah. that I become aware of when I'm looking. I think with my face, I tend to, do what I think I'm doing, I think. Mm -hmm. But it comes more to like fidgeting or like little movements or, but it is true though, in a way, 
a lot of time I might think something looks away that mm-hmm. it doesn't, but it's usually the opposite that I might be like, oh, that was such an awkward moment. It's going to mm-hmm. look horrible. And I watched the tape and I'm like, oh, actually, you didn't notice it as much as I thought mm-hmm. from the outside. But I think it's just because I'm such a, I'm quite a, a critic of myself. So yeah. when something goes a bit bad i might make it a bigger thing which is something you shouldn't do really mm-hmm. especially when you're acting because yeah. you should just be like oh that happened let's move on what do you think about theater because we did we did play together we, we were we weren't like scene partners but we did our little town with yeah. work actor studio and yeah. did, did you enjoy being on stage again i so that was that was a funny one i it was a funny one actually your <laughs> scene was, it was a funny one it was a Yes and no. I I I don't know. I think I prefer to do film mm-hmm. and like that was something I felt then as well that like I feel more at home and more like what I want to do is camera rather than theater. But I, at the same time I haven't really been involved in like a big production theater or like all that stuff. So I'm only talking now from having, you know, this I don't know how many minutes, mm-hmm. you know, each person's, you know, scene was. Um But it was I liked the process of rehearsing. I really enjoyed kind of getting to know my scene partner and more being part of this kind of thing that you don't really get as much with screen acting, I don't think. Like screen acting feels a bit more like on the day or you have a little bit of rehearsing, but it's not the process, it's not the same. Um but since I don't have any stage training other than what I did when I was like a kid, I felt a bit like out in the deep water because mm-hmm. there's a lot of things that goes into theater like your voice your movement on stage like how big you're supposed to be and i know especially like lee for example he's kind of like it should be kind of the same it's mm-hmm. not like you should be theater acting when you're on the stage like no maybe we'll do anything that we do need to think about <laughs> is we do need to be loud and we need to project that like voice is a huge thing. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I But think in terms was, of performance, I think yeah. Lee is kind of closer to like I want the truth of the moment. It exactly. Like so I was I think I was and that's why I'm a bit I'm still curious about theater. It's been a no no for me for a long time. I was like I don't want to do theater. Mm-hmm. Like that's not for me. But I am getting more and more curious about it because it's also a big part of acting and and It's it's a different thing, but I think it sounds like a really good challenge and really fun thing to be part of. Yeah. But it does scare me a lot more. I find it really scary. <laughs> like it's a different thing. I don't know. Yeah. It's like I don't know. And that might be also again me making it a big thing when maybe it's not once you're doing it. I mean uh, I I'm not in a position to give <laughs> any advice to anyone with you know my successful acting career. But I would say my experience is that when I did theater for the first time apart from showcases when I did my first theater play it was Master and Margarita in Russian in London. Uh, I was playing uh Ivan Bezdomny, Ivan the the homeless like mm-hmm. a poet in this like amazing book uh and they found me on monday mm-hmm. and the director told me like do you want to be in a play and i was like oh my god <laughs> i'm scared oh. so badly so it means i should do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes <laughs> so yeah i have to and when i did it, it was amazing honestly it's uh like i love Acting on camera, like for me, it's it's probably the main thing that I like. But at the same time, theater, like it gives this immediate feedback mm-hmm. from the audience right now, right here. It's such a, an adrenaline rush, mm-hmm. and when you know that you're like doing well, when you're you know like because you you know that like yes, I'm in it, and then at some point you kind of realize you don't even know. It's like you don't even know you're on stage. You do know you're on stage, but yeah. you're like you're in it, mm-hmm. and it's such such a uh, it's 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 amazing. Yeah. So I would say if you're afraid of it, maybe you should do it. Do it. <laughs> yeah. Ah, okay. I mean, especially look, <laughs> like when you're doing some fringe theater in London, there are so many like small, you know, perf- so small plays that like mm. you perform for like two, three, four nights sometimes. And like in a small pub, there won't be too many people who will see you fuck up. <laughs> That's encouraging. <laughs> <laughs> and also, if you fuck up, you realize like, Yeah, well, okay, so what? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's fine. Yeah, you can. And it's still scary. <laughs> I'm saying this like, yeah, it's not. Yeah, well, it's, it's scary. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I think, yeah, 
Yeah. I would say if you're scared of it, maybe maybe do if you have time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> maybe do it because it does take some time because it, you yeah. need to kind of like to rehearse for you know long period of time then you perform so Mm -hmm. yeah if you have busy modeling schedule or maybe some new filming schedule then yeah yeah. there's also that i know and also with theater i feel like it's it's really bad paid right i feel like the (laughs) no money at all is it (laughs) free theater if you get paid (laughs) you're lucky i just i just don't understand how people like it's a it's a lot yeah yeah it's it's huge commitment in terms of time Mm. and sometimes you have really like one or two performances and you get prepared for it like for a month, two mm. weeks, even like it does, mm. but still, like it's a huge commitment. And then you, like Fridge Theater, you don't get paid a lot. <laughs> Sometimes you don't get paid. Period. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, yeah, it's just for experience, I think. Exactly. I guess you should go into it more as like. I want to learn from this. Yeah. I'm enjoying this. This is my art, my craft. Yeah. Not like I'm gonna get some money. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, if you want to get some money, acting is a no-no. <laughs> you shouldn't go into acting for money because yeah, you were one percent of actors actually make some money. That's so true. Yeah, <laughs> it's not the the big money maker unless you become. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But if you think yeah. you will become. If you think of it, like you may be a little bit delusional, which may also help. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, are there any um, inspirations for you in the acting world? Who are you know, like the, the most favorite actors of yours? I I really like Florence Pugh, which might be a very like I don't know typical answer. But no, think... it's not that typical, but I think she's amazing. Yeah. I think she is <laughs> one of the one of the people in Hollywood who are not Russian speaking or not from like Eastern European bloc mm-hmm. who did a Russian accent without making it like caricature joke. Oh, did she? Which movie did she do Russian accent? Uh, in, in, uh, in Marvel. In Marvel oh, because she, right. she's like uh, Black Widow's sister mm. and so she does Russian accent and it's like it's a prominent accent. Are you done? Yeah. I go? Sure I can put hot sauce on it. Oh, I love hot sauce. Yes. It's oh. not just awful caricature oh. that you hear a lot. It's like when I hear people do Swedish accent, I'm just like, no. That sounds like German. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so far, yeah. well, why do you like Flores beef so much? I feel like I want to like have a coffee with her and hang out or like have a beer. I don't know. I just like her as a person. I obviously don't know her, so she might be super different. (laughs) But like she gives me that vibe of like that could not like that could be me, but she gives me that, you know, inspiration of like you can just be like a normal person Mm. and do acting kind of like whereas some actors like or actresses like just feel, I feel like Margaret Robbie, for example, she feels like she's too perfect. <laughs> like, she's almost like, I'm like, I can't relate with that. You know what I mean? Like, she's amazing too, I think. Yeah. But like, there's something more relatable for me with, with Florence Pugh, for mm-hmm. example. And uh, I think she's an amazing actress. Like, she's- everything I watch her in, I'm just like, yes. Yeah, I like yeah. This. I, I've seen her um, not in many things, but she's definitely, she was very, very good in Oppenheimer. She was really good in Marvel. I've seen her in something else, I think, but I don't remember. But she's like, she, she's really good. Yeah, she yeah. did. Did you watch Midsummer? It's no. like a horror movie about Swedish Midsummer, no, no. And there's like Americans going there. Yeah. Anyway, she's really good in that. That yeah. was the first movie I watched with her. And I know, I didn't even know who she was then. Mm-hmm. Uh, she wasn't like a famous actress, not yeah. to me. Um, and then, yeah, she's been in a bunch of things now that I've really mm-hmm. enjoyed. Um, is she is she in New Dune? I, have, I haven't watched yeah, it. Yeah, she's in Dune. I, see, she has I a still small haven't part, watched though. it. Yeah. She's a very small part, but I think there is a Dune 3 coming. I'm yeah. sure there will I be. Think, I think they're, they're filming it, or yeah. they just confirmed they will. And I'm assuming, my guess is that she will have a bigger part mm. in the no one spoilers coming. though for for second. Yeah, sorry, one. no so spoilers. I know I'm late to the party. I really <laughs> loved Dune One. I really loved it, and I right. still haven't watched second one. And it's a yeah, shame. The second one is better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a funny thing that like, why do you like this actress or actor? It's like, 
it's such a yeah mm -hmm. i don't know you just have to click you just click with them yeah. somehow and you can like relate with them and mm -hmm. feel feel like they I, i think a good big thing for me is just feel like they are nice people mm -hmm. i don't know mm -hmm. yeah i understand, I understand what I mean. and that can yeah. be obviously very not true yeah. as well because they could just put up a front but yeah. i do find that with her and also like liking what i'm seeing when i see her on on, mm -hmm. on screen um so yeah i would say she's the one who popped up and then there is also like there are some actresses like from sweden who are in hollywood right and for me they're always quite inspirational to me because i feel like that's really relatable who? in a way there is like alicia vikander the lover Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I yes, she's um, amazing. I think I, she's great. First of all, Tom Ryder is good, but I really loved her in Light Between Oceans. Oh, I haven't watched that one. Oh, she, I think it's it's it's. I really love the film, and she is just amazing in it. But she is good in yeah. everything, and yeah. that ex machina as well. Yeah, yeah. No, I really, I also really like her, and I think there's also that sense of. She feels very, like, she's very Swedish to me when I see her off screen. Yeah. She seems very, like, a bit skilled back. Like, she's not super, like, you know, some Hollywood actresses might be very a lot sometimes, mm. maybe, when they, they're almost, like, performing when they're not. Like, mm. if they're in an interview or, like, they just feel like a celebrity in a different way. Whereas I feel like when I see her in an interview she does, whatever, she's just very normal mm. and very, like, herself. And... Um, I think she's a really good actress as well, but yeah. yeah, and she's good. And then, I mean, I know, and then there's someone, Frida Gustafsson, she's um, she's kind of like more like coming up actress, mm -hmm. I think. She's from Sweden, but she used to be a model mm -hmm. and she's done the whole thing as well. And she's in Vikings now on Netflix. I know some people don't like Vikings because it's, some people <laughs> think it's too... <laughs> too sensitive about history. It's, yes, and a bit like, yeah. you know. The accents and the things and all that stuff but i still find it quite inspirational to see someone who's like also coming from sweden done mm. modeling and it's like a very you know mm. it's like a similar journey in that sense i guess of, of, of a person Wait a second. in vikings which vikings had a show more it's not sweden it's not denmark is it norway no that they are shooting it in no no, no. no. i think i think which which like which vikings are <laughs> dominant in, in the series from which region I oh I thought they were Swedish Swedish but I don't know I'm not I'm I, sure I'm not sure I'm but not sure. Uh, how do you find accents in, in, in those series like is it kind of it, is well, it kind of fantasy Viking accent or is so, it like close to the region I feel like because they've casted Swedish people speaking English mm -hmm. it's more doable yeah. they don't sound German that's yeah. where it's annoying to me when people <laughs> like have a you know Swedish accent yeah. Uh, they're not Swedish and they just sound German to me, but they sound Swedish, but it does sometimes go to, it's a very Swedish accent. It's, it's not how a Swede would talk English, but mm -hmm. I guess what they're trying to do is like, instead of speaking Swedish, we're going yeah. to speak English with a very strong... <laughs> I, I don't understand why they do that. That's Swedish one accent. The, that's one of the things I don't uh, understand. Because like yeah. when you're showing this country, but your show is in English, but people in the show are talking their own language so they should speak english without any accent yeah yeah <laughs> it's weird <laughs> why do i speak kind of english with russian accent if the said in russia it's like what it's are the people dumb why they talk <laughs> with the accent on their own in their own language <laughs> i know i think it must just be the fantasy for yeah. people to be yeah. like oh we're in this environment now and like <laughs> but we don't need to do subtitles yeah um yeah but i think that's more also like a relatable thing and i i think she's fairly good as well mm -hmm. and she's good and yeah i think those are my my three is there any preference for you like in the projects that you would seek to be to act in or you would take whatever <laughs> mm. yeah, i wouldn't take whatever i don't think uh, <laughs> it's a very low standard within limitations <laughs> of not adult movies <laughs> i mean not adult industry but like of you know <laughs> um but i think i would like to be i would love to do like a feature film obviously or like a tv show i mean mm -hmm. that kind of thing would be i think so much fun to be mm -hmm. part of and like to have more of a 
like a longer project and something that you work on for mm. a long time with like the same people and you build this thing together because yeah. I haven't done a feature film yet so uh, that would be definitely up there and something I wanted quite real I like real stuff and in general that's what I watch myself like I personally don't really watch too much fantasy or sci-fi or or like these these worlds mm -hmm. wouldn't say no to it I mean if Marvel call me tomorrow I mean <laughs> <laughs> You know, maybe yeah, I'll say yes. Maybe, maybe. Um, Feige, you know. You know. <laughs> but yeah, when it comes down to what I tend to look at and when I read scripts and I get auditions for things, it's like if it's like normal, mm. that's what I'm, I enjoy mm. the most. If it's like, it, it can be a bit heightened, like even like sex education, which is obviously a bit elevated. Mm -hmm. But I quite like that stuff as yeah. well. And a bit, a little bit fun, a little bit mm. cheeky. Like, do you have some play? playroom it's mm. not too serious like i don't know if I, I i don't know but to be in a very very serious movie with like emotional scenes and all that i mean that's probably incredible if you manage to get it right i feel like i would like to have more fun like just mm. i don't know this is like my at the moment yeah what i'm like how do you know how long they will shoot vikings i have no idea <laughs> because i could definitely see a vikings you would be Perfect. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. I might need to like have a little Google. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe ask Amanda. I actually think <laughs> they like, might be done yeah, filming yeah. it. Uh, uh, might be the last. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, you know. All right, then we have uh, just two segments left. Okay. And one of the segments is Blitz Round. Oh, God. Quick questions, okay. quick answers. No right or wrong answers. No points, no prize. Okay. No point of doing it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. First question that I never asked anyone, but because we are recording on the day of Euro finals, where, where England plays Spain for the championship, who do you think will win? I think, sorry, I think Spain is going to win, but I'm rooting for England, yeah. obviously. Yeah. I want them to win. Okay. But I think Spain is a killer. I kind of, I kind of, I'm kind of there with you. Like I will be rooting for England. I'm preparing, but I think Spain is is very, very strong. This mm -hmm. and like they, they play more attacking football. I think and they're kind of more. They they feel feels like they're very, very strong. <laughs> you know the funny thing I've, I've heard. Uh, so uh, I do, I do, I forget what his name was. His name this. A 16 year old who plays for Spain. Right. Apparently, by German laws, he's not allowed to play past some time, past 9 p.m., I think, because oh like kids God. under some age are not allowed to work in Germany after. So, so I think, I think I've heard some, I don't know if it's true. Like, so he legally is not allowed. And if he will play, which counts as work, uh, Spain, <laughs> Spain would have to pay some fees. Oh like, my God, for that's cremation. crazy. <laughs> that's, uh, there's a lot of teams with six year olds, right? I don't know. No, no, I think sixteen-year-old is like it's very kind of very, early. Yeah. I don't think there's so too many yeah. of them, but it's <laughs> it's weird. But yeah, this is in Germany. That's a lot. Wow. <laughs> which is you know made to protect youth. Yeah. From, yeah. Which even, which even makes sense, but even in this case, it seems like this is absurd. <laughs> yeah. Even if it's like football. Yeah. Professionals still work. <laughs> still working. <laughs> Are you getting paid for it? <laughs> well, <laughs> that is work. All right. Let's continue. So the actual blitz round now. Ready. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Texting or talking? Talking. Your one guilty pleasure. I want to say pick a mix. I don't know what it is. It's like candy. Okay. Swedish candy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what makes you laugh? Uh, ooh, what makes me laugh? People that don't know that they're funny, mm -hmm. so they're unintentionally funny. <laughs> That's the funniest thing to me. <laughs> All right, what makes you angry? Lying. People mm -hmm. that are not honest. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Do you have any nicknames? I well, I have have one. <laughs> Nobody really calls it this anymore. It was in Sweden, mm -hmm. so I grew up with a nickname, Susu. <laughs> Which means nothing. <laughs> just, just, just it's just. Which is based on. It's, it's like. Was it the sound you were making all the time? <laughs> no, 
know. I think it was one of those things of like, so Sophie, so so. It just became、mm. like I have one of my closest friend is Linia. She was Lily.、Mm-hmm. I don't know. It just、okay. was like I don't know. I so remember, you were just lazy back there. Yeah,、like、you didn't didn't want to pronounce the full name. <laughs> exactly. Just, I, would, would it be An An? <laughs> An. It does sound a bit like baby language, actually.、Um, and I would say in London, it's Soph. People call me Soph,、okay. but that's quite a common、yeah. one, isn't it? What dish do you cook best? Oh, I actually consider myself doing really good pasta, and、yeah. we also have our own pasta machine, so I can make my own pasta. <laughs> all right, all right, show off. <laughs> Your favorite character in any fictional story? Like book, films, games. I really like Eric in Sex Education.、Mm-hmm. I can just. I still like, haven't watched it. He's so、still、good. I just、it. love him. I like. I'll I'll listen to him any time if I'm in a bad mood and I'll just be happy. Like he's he's so much fun. I'll see him. I really enjoy watching Eric in、okay. Sex Education. <laughs>、uh, Star Wars or the Lord of the Rings? I want. I'm gonna say Lord of the Rings. I've never watched Star Wars. <laughs> I'll count it. I'll count it <laughs> because I secretly count the the score. Okay. And I prefer Lord of the Rings. <laughs> okay, good. I'm in good books.、Um, do you have any unknown, unexpected talents?、Um, I can stand on my head. <laughs> I don't know if that's an expected talent. You can stand on your head. Yes. Well, I do a lot of yoga, so maybe that's not very unexpected. Okay.、Um, what、All、else、right. could、no. be a little? That's unex- pretty impressive. Is it? <laughs> yes. I don't know. I barely stand on my feet. <laughs>、uh, How often do you cry? Oh, that's very varying. Like depending on my mood,、mm. I sometimes I cry for no reason. Sometimes I cry multiple days in a row. Sometimes I don't cry for months.、Um, it's so dependent on, but、mm-hmm. not too much. I not I don't cry too much, but I cry a lot to like. Stand up to cancer, bake off. Like、mm. if you put that on, I'll be crying.、Mm. Like, for, like,、okay. there's like a lot of like TV thing. If I'm watching something and I'm like, I'll I'll easily cry. But、yeah. for like a personal thing, like just crying in everyday、mm. life, that for me is more like a build up. Like、mm. I wouldn't be like,、oh, I'm so annoyed today, and I'll just cry. Like、yeah. it would be more like if I've been fucking annoyed for like a month. I might have a breakdown. Yeah, like it's more like that. How can people reach you if they want to work with you? Oh well, if you want to work with me as a model, <laughs> if you want me to do some modeling, um, it's my agency, The Hive, which is a London-based agency, and they're on my Instagram. Uh, there is a link there、mm-hmm. with my with my profile, so you'll just get in there. You can、mm-hmm. just email. Basically, them.、Uh, and as an actor, it's、uh, Amanda. So it's agent at workingactorsagency.co.uk. I think I don't know. Also, the email is in my social media page.、Yeah. So <laughs> you'll have all the links in the、oh, description to the episode. Amazing. And finally, one cool thing I asked you yesterday to prepare. I hope you had, had enough time. Is it something that you really like and you think our viewers should like? Should should or listeners? Should try it too. Yes.、Uh, well, I had a few things that I thought about. Go for it. But I ended up wanting to say. So I've read a book. I was on a holiday. I came back on Monday, right? So I had some time to read,、uh, and I brought this book, which also people probably read already. It's an old book-ish. It's the it's called the Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, <laughs> and I brought the book with me. <laughs> No,、yeah. it's not a promotion. <laughs> it's not a PR thing. Yeah, But I brought it because I wanted to just read a little thing because this was so helpful for me. Like, because it's、um, I personally tend to never be satisfied, and I always strive for more. Like, I'm never really like, yeah, this is good. Like, I always feel like, and then this thing, you know,、mm-hmm. there's always that, and、uh, being hard on yourself, and like all these things, and having a lot of expectations, etc. So I read this book, and I don't know if you read it. No, it's、um, basically about turning negative things in your to your life into something positive and focus on them rather than. I definitely should read that. <laughs> it's really good, and I was like, this this is actually really helpful. So, for example, like I think this is a really good thing. It says, 
The desire for more positive experience is itself a negative experience. And paradoxically, the acceptance of one's negative experience is itself a positive experience. And I find that really interesting because the striving for always wanting something more it means you never means get you it. don't have it. So that in itself is kind of a negative experience to be like, I really want that job or like, I'm really going to do that because I'm not doing it right now or I don't have that right now. Whereas maybe accepting that you don't have something or you're okay where you are, like the acceptance of, of the lack of something is in itself freeing and a positive thing. Mm -hmm. It's a bit, you need to kind of read a book to get around this. No, it but makes sense. It makes sense to a degree. <laughs> I, like it. It, I would say it's more like you need that's like you need to read the book to kind mm -hmm. of get ahead of it because it's not about like don't have any dreams don't have any goals like there is still obviously you need to yeah. to proceed in life you need some kind of goals but that was sorry I'm going to read another thing because yeah. was, that was another thing that really stuck out to me is like basically because the question what do you want out of life or maybe what do you want what's your dream job like you know all these things that we get questioned mm -hmm. all the time and we always think about, oh, this is what I'm reaching for. This is my goals. Like that's our society, right? We always feed that we should want the, the best for us, the most things. And actually, if you ask yourself instead, what pain do you want in your life? Or what are you willing to struggle for? That's more the real answer. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people might be saying, I want to be an actor. I want to be a movie star, let's say. And then they don't realize the struggle. Mm -hmm. And the only way that you get to a goal is through the struggle. And the only way that you actually feel happy at the end of it is if you had a struggle. Because like, it's like if somebody just gives you money out of the blue when you're born with money, you're not going to be happy that you have money. But if Because you, you will not understand the difference, basically. Exactly. Yeah. And like, so all happiness kind of stems from a struggle like a journey mm -hmm. in a way like that's just how we feel satisfied as humans basically because yes. of our brains how they work um so knowing that everything comes with a struggle and navigate what are the struggles that you're okay with might be better way to actually lead you to what you should focus on and what you want because it comes with everything even like i want to have a relationship but then it's like what's the struggle for a relationship what do i need to you know sacrifice or mm. and like the struggles that you choose in life it's probably better to choose them rather than your goals because the struggles they will always be there and they will lead you to the goal mm. um in a way so to to like figure out those i think can be really helpful and like kind of be up for them because they will all they will always come with them and it's quite yeah. good to be like i'm prepared for this i'm okay with this mm. and yeah. yeah. Anyway, I think if you read the book, it makes more sense. No, it, it does make sense. Honestly, it does make sense. But I, I as I uh, understand, the book elaborates on it even more mm -hmm. and explains more. Yes. Of it. Yes. I love it. Yeah. It's I a love good one. it. Thank you so much. Oh, and I thank hope we'll do you. it again. Yes. Hopefully, we'll have some a chance, you know, to discuss some new big projects that we are oh, in. Yes. Maybe soon. Hopefully. Yes, of course. <laughs> That'd be loads. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Bye, you guys. so much. <laughs>